god. That is hot. I don't want the internet to bully me anymore. I just want a wide receiver. And he's gonna run it deep out of the end zone here. And he breaks free! <laughs> Jimmy just stepped out, AP. He stepped up the back of the end zone. He threw a pick. Oh my god. He still messed it up. Oh, we still here. He's not Jimmy's complete. It's frickin' frackin' time. Nation, welcome to Jump Set Podcast, the podcast where you don't. How do you pack your But it sure does help. I'm your host, Tom. It's freaking fracking Friday night. Karasi. Come on, baby. That's right. We got those lungs back, baby. Woo! I've been getting into shape a little bit more. And by shape, I mean I have worked out a handful of times over the past couple of weeks, including uh, this week. Did seven and a half miles on the bike and then also did a mile run. Today, did a full body and also another eight-mile uh, bike. So listen, we're building it back up. I told you. I'm training for the combine. The 40-yard dash will be mine next season. Trust me. I remember. I remember. Go, go! What a fiver. It's Friday. You know what that means. What's going on, buddy? Good to see you. John, they told you watch March Madness. I'm casual. Go UConn. Yeah, honestly, I just have it on the background usually. Um... And that's about it. Like, I didn't fill out a bracket or anything like that because I know absolutely nothing about the sport. So, yeah. But it's been fun to watch, though, I will say. Jamie! Welcome to the posse. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Good to see you. Thank you, thank you, and thank you. Oh, we could run. Oh, we could run. We could... Mm, mm, mm. I believe. I believe. We also have two packages from the P.O. box. So we're going to get to open in those as well. Hold on. Let's change this. Michelle! Two are going to SmackDown after WrestleMania for B-Day. Oh, hey. Hell to the yeah. I'll be at the Raw uh, the week of Mania. So the go-home show for Raw. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Really looking forward to that. That'll be super duper cool. Jacqueline, would fire right with you on the weight loss kick. Down 20 pounds in two months. Keep it up. Let's <laughs> Jacqueline, let's go. Let's go. Crush it. Absolutely. Listen, it's about that time. I was just like January, December, I was in a rhythm. I was feeling good. I was like, all right, I got this. And then January and the playoffs happened. And then all of February happened. And I was like, oh, okay. Things got a little out of hand. So now we're we're coming back. We're coming on back. So we're getting there slowly, but surely. We're getting there. We're getting there. So, uh, so good, Mature. I'm a corn boy. Good to see you. Good to see you. Oh, yeah, we rocking. We rock down 40 pounds in four months. Let's go, Logan. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Hey, let's go. Only person that's got to be happy with it is you. That's it. I actually, actually, I don't know if I'm, I'm going to yet. But I have been looking in to classes again because back in 2018, uh, when I was training to run the marathon, I was doing Brazilian jiu-jitsu, and I loved it. And then I got hurt, and then I was like, well, I can't risk, you know, getting hurt for the marathon. And then I stopped doing it. And I've always thought about it again. The pandemic happened, and then just laziness and excuses and work. So, yeah, might be getting back into that as well. Not online. Not online jiu-jitsu, though. I won't be doing it with Springsteen. Daniel! What a fire top! Happy Friday. Went back to work today. I was the only people in my bracket who picked Yale to upset Auburn. It's a great day. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. We rocking. We are, uh, we're rocking thermodynamics. Oh boy. Oh boy. Uh, you know, we're good. It's been, uh, it's been a good week. 
I feel like this past week or so, because after free agency was absolutely insane, um, I really prioritized. I was like, hey, like, I need a legit break. And now, again, in Tom Grassi words, that just means still putting out content five days a week, and maybe I'll just stream one day instead of putting out a video and streaming. But kind of prioritized that a little bit this week. Had a bunch of interviews, um, which was really, really cool. Uh, there was a great piece that came out for Packers Talk. Uh, I was talked to the BBC the other day in their sports radio, so that was really cool. So, yeah, um, got a bunch of interviews lined up next week. So trying to, you know, go on places and, you know, have the name get out there a little bit, especially starting to help out, you know, either smaller shows or what have you. Got to build up those smaller creators 100%. And it's been good. Uh, went to go see Dune 2 again. We saw that again on Wednesday night, and it was just as good as the first time. Absolutely loved it. Went out to dinner last night. I know. Look at Tom Grassi having, like, a tiny little resemblance of a life right now. It's uh, It's been nice. And so now we got to lock it down. We're going to have a long uh, Q&A. Dylan, we're going to Bucks lakers game in a couple days and spending some time in Milwaukee. What are some things you recommend to do there? Nothing related to beer, please. Well, it shouldn't be like freezing, freezing cold. The Riverwalk is amazing. Um, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy it. You got to go to the downtown market. The market is so good. There's so many different types of shops and like food and stuff like that. So I highly, highly recommend that as well. I don't know if that ping pong bar is still there from years ago, but that was really cool. Yeah, Milwaukee is an awesome city. I love all of it and enjoy it. Enjoy it. So it's going to be a time. That should be a good game too. Kevin, say Tom, your opinion on Oscars when Oppenheimer won big. Also, if you watch Godzilla vs. Kong, the new empire also lost 20 pounds in two months. Hey, let's go, Kevin. Let's go. Let's go, baby. Uh, Listen, Oppenheimer deserved it. I mean, Oppenheimer was a great movie. I have not seen Godzilla minus one yet, and I have not seen Godzilla and Kong. Um, The only reason why is because I feel like I don't need to go see that in theaters. Just me personally. Like I saw the Godzilla that came out. Was it Gareth Edwards who did that? Right. Like when they first like kicked this off again, I saw Godzilla. I saw the second one. And then I, I saw, I think Godzilla vs Kong. I think I saw on like HBO max or something, but yeah, no, I haven't seen it yet. Just cause like, I like Godzilla a lot. I'm more, I would be more excited to see Godzilla minus one. I'm cool that both worlds can exist where you can have like the campy kind of like ridiculous Godzilla and the more kind of serious in tone, which was Godzilla minus one, which again, I still really want to see, but yeah, I'll probably see it at some point, but just not going to go to theaters for it. You know, Terry, what up Fetty for the kitty. Oaken, you and Metro Detroit takes down Kentucky. Let's go. I saw that Kentucky. Woo. Woo. What the hell happened? Yeah, that was, uh, that's what makes March Madness super fun, right? Like super duper fun because it, it's all about the underdog or like a school that, you know, you don't know a ton about and then like a big program. That's what makes it all, that's what makes it great. It's underdog, babe. It's underdog. Appreciate you. Adrian, how are you doing today, Tom? Currently paying for a snowstorm on Sunday, possibly a six plus inches. Oh, how I love March. Yeah, I mean, Perna was talking, what was that, last week or two weeks ago? He said that, Colorado got like two feet of snow. So yeah, the weather's weird here. It was like super nice last week and it was like 65 and 70 degrees. And now it's like, you know, 25 degrees at night. So I don't, I don't even know the weather no more. I don't. Alex Ritter, a lot of time gives me my NFL news before shifting. <laughs> Listen, gotta be quick. Tarun, just finished my finals. Screw Diffusion. Uh, <laughs> take me back to Thermo. Never thought I'd ever say that one, but you're done. But you're done, you're done, and you're done. That's it. Nick, the fire. Let's go, bro. Can wait to see Cody and Rowan face to face tonight? I am currently DVRing it because I want to wanna make sure I see it. Want to make sure I'm seeing it. WrestleMania right around the corner. Stern, with a fire. SummerSlam heads to Cleveland on Saturday, August 3rd at Cleveland Brown Stadium. Yes, I saw that. There, there's potential. Um, it's actually, there were, because I actually texted Wes and I was like, hey, do you want to go to SummerSlam? And then that's when family night is for the Packers. So I might try to go, though. I might try. Vanessa, to her, get a little life in your life. Round is a shape. It's accurate. Very accurate. Daniel, what a fire you have in social life and uh, is the chaos this world needs in 2024. I know. That's the only thing that Tom did. That no one had on their bingo card. They're like, Tom actually leaving the house? All right. I, I don't know about that one. Oakland, you beating Kentucky. That one was a little bit closer, but... See, so yeah, I'm excited for the new Ghostbusters. Yeah, I I mean, again, you just go see it, right? But I heard I heard not good things. I heard it was very meh, which is disappointing. 
Paul, would find a Stroud extends life. The Stroud expands consciousness. The Stroud must flow that and chair. All things are possible through the chair and Strouds. Rachel, would a fire said, oh yeah, well, I dropped off my taxes at HR Block today, so that's something. Now let's go and get swole together and crush our fitness goal. Also going to see Dune 2 tomorrow. All right, now the question is, Rachel, are you going to see it in IMAX? That's the question. Are you going to see it in IMAX? That's the ultimate question. Vader, we're Tara, such a big sci-fi fan, but Dune is a series that intimidates me. Keep trying to get myself to read, watch it. Is it difficult to follow as it looks? So the books are a whole different beast. I will say personally, I had no problem following it. So I read like half the first book because I read it getting ready for the first movie or I read it like right after the first movie. And I was like, okay. And then like the season happened and I didn't have time anymore. But um, no, I think it's really easy to follow. Uh, Denis Villeneuve does a really, really nice job. The first one is definitely a slow burn. Um, I loved it though. Cause I thought the world building was really good. The God, everything, the visuals were amazing. The acting was great. So yeah, I loved every second of it. Tim, what a fire. So how great was X-Men 97 so far? Magneto was never a villain. I have not seen it yet. Don't, don't hurt me. I want to. It's on the list. It's on the list. But yes, I've heard amazing things. I think I'm just going to let them all come out, and then I'm just going to binge the crap out of it, though. Jimmy, what a tour. Uh, watch this. Watch this. Benjamin, what a fire. Hey, Tom, met you in Dallas. Oh, they're an internship, but I didn't bring any football gear. While you're at the Combine, I got my return offer. Let's go! Hey, come on now. Rock and rolling. That's great. I hope you're doing well. Let's go. Kel, thanks for the membership. Appreciate you. Triple J, Discord server is insane. We spent an hour talking about what to put on a hot dog consensus. Nobody likes ketchup, pure chaos, and I love it. Yes, as it should be. Ray, we are excited about Boondock Saints 3. Yeah, I'm cautiously optimistic. Cautiously. They're making a lot of remakes, and I just don't know. I don't know how good they're going to be, you know? Joe went at fire. Zero and Reigns on McAfee today. Also, Drew McIntyre is trolling gold. McIntyre is having the run of his life, and I'm so happy for him, and I hope he wins at Mania, and I love Seth. Uh, I saw he was on it. I didn't get a chance to watch it yet, though. Hey, Ritour, watch Jordan Love's uh, interview. I saw that he was on that podcast. Yes, I saw that. I didn't get a chance to see it, though. I saw, like, some clips on Twitter, and that was about it. Triple A with a fiver. Gators and Cowboys both lose in the first round. Scooter, want to talk about it. Yeah, it seems like Scooter's going through it. But, hey, at least... His teams are consistent, right? Big Mo and a fiver. Hey, Tom, I'm 6'4", and used to play tight end in college for Division II. I'm now fat and married, weighing 340 pounds. I'm on my journey to get down to 240. Hey, let's go, Big Mo. Come on now. Come on now. Then it's going to be medium Mo. I like that. I like that. Come on. Come on. Crush it. Crush it. Rate the Bengals free agency signing so far? That's solid. I mean, again, I'm kind of just waiting to see what happens with T. Higgins. That's kind of where I'm at, but yeah, that's solid. Oh, let's see. Eric with a tour. Tom, did you make a March Madness bracket? I did not. I always want to, and then I always forget. So, yeah. I also don't know anything about the sport, though. <laughs> so, very good tour. My favorite ESPN. Where? Just Tom Grothy over here. Jim, only 10 perfect practice left. That That is pretty freaking crazy. 22 million a fall and crazy March Madness. Love your videos. 14 months. Hey, appreciate you, Jim. That 10? I know, because Bijan's no longer on there, right? That's pretty nuts. John, thanks for the membership. Appreciate you. Web with two or Tom, since you're lactose and vegan, how you get calcium? Oh, calcium's not an issue. I'm not lactose, by the way. I'm just allergic to dairy. Um, so lactose intolerant people, like they can have dairy products and it just will mess with their stomachs, but they can take like lactate or something. I'm straight up allergic. Um, yeah, no, calcium's the easiest thing to get. Yeah, I just I just eat things with calcium. A ton of vegetables. That's uh yeah. But calcium's never been an issue. The only thing I take is a B12 and vitamin D supplement just because I've always been low for vitamin D. Stop it a fire. End of Evangeline staying in theaters. Should see that. I've heard I've heard good things. I haven't heard a lot, but everyone who said it is pretty solid. Meta, with day 10. Tom, just started posting content to YouTube. Was wondering if you could offer any advice for the first time YouTuber. Can't wait for WrestleMania. Hey, it's gonna be awesome. Um, the thing I always tell people is you start cheap, right? Buy like a, a microphone, like a USB mic that just has good quality. Um, make it under like a hundred bucks. You could buy an HD webcam um, or anything HD that's going to give you 1080p is fine. And it's just consistency. It's just doing it. So it's the act of posting it. And you also, and I can't answer this for you and I can't answer this for any creator. It depends on why you're doing something, right? If you're doing it just because you love it, then you're great. Then it doesn't matter how much success that you have. And obviously you want people to watch and you want people to see the content. But I mean, 
If you've been here for any amount of time, you know how many times I've told this story. It took three years to make 200 bucks doing this thing, but I just love doing it so much. So yeah, you just do it. Be consistent with it. Um, and yeah. And then if you find yourself doing it more and more for like months and into like a year or a year and a half, then you could always upgrade equipment if you, if you need, if you think that that would take the content to the next level, if that would make sense. So just post things that you want to post. Mac with a fire Tom. Wondering what you think the Lions would be drafting. Any thoughts on doing an NFC North draft video? Uh, I usually do a post draft one and obviously stream the draft and stuff. But um, I imagine they're probably going to look at secondary again. Um, that would probably be it. Maybe another wide receiver at some point. But that's what I would guess for the Lions. But yeah, probably secondary. Um, just to make it a little bit better. Just a little bit better. And then, I don't know about an NFC North video beforehand. Usually the Packers stuff um, is what dominates the draft content, but then I'll also make some mock draft stuff, so the Lions will be included in that. Garrett with a fire. Vikings trade to the Cardinals fourth and cost the cards Marvin Harrison Jr. I'll join the Vikings hate train for the rest of my life. Yes. 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 Yeah, Bo! All right, 13. Uh, Tom, which QB should we get since Big 3 will be long gone before we are on the clock? Go get J.J. McCarthy just to piss off the Chargers. Just to, just that. I don't even know if he's going to be good, but just for that. Just for that. Joe, it's how done with the Vikings be to trade Jefferson? Um, It wouldn't be the smartest idea, but it depends on money. I don't think they're going to. I, I, I really don't, but um, I would laugh. Very, very, very hard. Show it to her. Forgot to ask how good Yash Nyman is for Carolina. Yeah, Yash is great. So Yash is the definition of a very, very solid offensive lineman. Um, I think he's probably going to be an upgrade on Carolina's O-line immediately. And you've got a very solid player. Um, didn't play a whole lot last year just because he kind of got outplayed a bit. But there were plenty of times where Yash Nyman was like the savior of that offensive line. So I think he's going to help for, uh, protect Bryce. Kel, excited we got the first one to finish the Barkley Marathon. 100-mile trail race. There's a Netflix documentary about the race. It's fascinating. I just saw, I just saw like, an article or headline about that, which is super-duper cool, right? I saw, like, the timing, which was, yeah, that seems, that seems intense. Ghost with fire, week five. Packers 24, Raiders 28. Great. It's just like real life. It's just like real life. Let's go on, Wookie. A very big congratulations to you as well. Heck yeah. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Braylon Allen to the Packers. Maybe. Maybe. I know it, it's a very popular decision. I don't know if they'll go with that, but we'll see. We'll see. Oh, dang, I really don't have anybody for March Madness. Yeah, no, I don't. Again, like, suit. Oh, I thought I was wearing my New Paltz sweatshirt still. New Paltz, like, really didn't do anything with that. So, yeah, no. There it is. So, uh, lucky to fire. You should definitely watch Shogun. Oh, no, I've watched Shogun. No, I am caught up on Shogun. That is one of the shows that, like, I'm locked in. That first, I, so I watched... Because I think it was a double premiere, right, to start. Um, the first episode was good, and then you saw someone being boiled alive, and I was like, oh, okay, that that was intense. Um, but it was good, and I liked it. And then the remaining episodes have been great. I, I definitely didn't like that the acting has been great, cinematography's good, yeah, story's good. I'm thoroughly enjoying it. Thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoying it. And Sinclair is barking. Hey, you met Dame? There you go. There you go. Who's winning Roman Rock? Uh, Seth Cody, I'm pretty sure it's going to be Roman Rock are going to win night one, and I think Cody's going to win night two, and Seth is going to lose night two. That would be my prediction. So. In high school, we played football, a lineman, linebacker. I played wide receiver. Wide receiver. But, yeah. I, I, mostly it was with the friends and stuff. The one time I did play football, it was wide receiver, though. I played soccer. Well, soccer. Rocky, if they got two, are still mad about Saquon. <laughs> I have not seen that nickname, Snakequan. Okay. Singletary's 26 now. Hey, maybe maybe that will work out. Yeah, I know Gi Giants fans are not too happy. The Acolyte, tra the Acolyte trailer? Okay, let's talk about the Acolyte trailer. It's so funny, and like this is why it's also the internet, right? I watched that trailer because that's a show like I had circled for a while because the premise seems really cool. There's no Skywalkers. It's going back to High Republic. We're talking about Sith. I'm all about it. The backlash online, like, I thought it was going to be just like, oh, because they were like, the Seth haven't, uh, the Seth, the Sith haven't been seen for a millennium, whatever, which I think is very easily fixed. But yeah, it had like a ton of dislikes too. And I was like, are we watching the same trailer? Like, I get it. Star Wars, and I have not watched Ahsoka yet, 
But Star Wars is very hit or miss with their shows, right? Because you could have something like Kenobi, which I really like the beginning and end. Middle was kind of like whatever. Mandalorian definitely has some really, really good points too, especially early on. You know, every now and then it's like hit or miss. Boba Fett was definitely a miss, except for the Mandalorian episode. But you have Andor, which is like, one of the best pieces of Star Wars media ever that's been created, in my opinion, because it was so effing good. And then I heard Ahsoka was, like, a good balance. Like, it was solid, but I heard some people, like, didn't like it. But this one, yeah, like, I'm excited for it. I just didn't think it would get that much hate. But I don't know. Allison, Tom, have you seen uh, you live in three weeks? How you been? Missed you. Thoughts on Lions for agency? Are we ready for the draft? And any script vid? Hey, well, we already did the scripted video, so the uh, free agency scripted vid came out already, so that one's done. Uh, yeah, Lions for agency, they, they showed up some of their secondary. I know Chauncey Gardner-Johnson went back to Philadelphia, which not too many Lions fans are crying about. Yeah, but I, their front office also said, like, we're not going to go crazy in free agency because they're going to build their team through the draft. So I imagine that that's where you're going to get the bulk of moves. Kilometers, Tom, random question, maybe a fun one. What are your top 10 favorite TV shows? They'd be live action or animated. That is a good question. Please hold. Also, I just realized I'm in full Packers. Bam! Hold on, Lucy. Go ahead. Can you make up the stairs? Okay. I made up the stairs. Okay. Uh, top 10 favorite TV shows. All right. In no particular order. Uh, the Leftovers are de is definitely on there. Breaking Bad's got to be on there. Um, oh, and I got I to gotta dig deep for this now. I don't know if I put Battlestar Galactica, the new one, in uh, my top 10. I don't know if I do. I don't think I do. I'm going to hold on to that one for right this second. All right, hold on. I got to like really, really give me, give me some time. Uh, I'll, I'll think of a list. I'll think of a list. I got it. I got it. Bad Bad Man would fire Tom. Which film from the GCU, either Coach or Sagas, would do the best in the MCU? Lean towards anger, but I'd love to see what Otto could do. Otto, I feel like would be kind of like a Zemo kind of villain. You know what I mean? I feel like that could fit in very well, but yeah, I think it'd be anger. Or it could be Chamas. Could be Chamas. Chamas, Chamas got fun. Well, would they fire you to watch the receiver Netflix series? Probably at some point. I mean, like not in like a rush to be like, yeah, but yeah. Joe at five two. I'll see you again, Tom. Please, if your translator builds four and a half million dollars of uh, legal gambling debt, get him help and don't pay it off yourself. Good to know. That is uh, it's good to know. One priority to fire. Just wondering if you got a uh, favor for the pack's first round pick yet. Uh, also, can't wait for your annual draft meltdown. Not yet. Not yet. I'm uh. Gonna knock out a ton of reaction videos next week, I think. Uh, the, uh, these next couple weeks, I'm gonna, I really just want to knock out a bunch of the season reaction videos just to kind of get through them. Um, and then we're just going to be like full-blown draft content. And then I'll develop all the draft crushes. Ghost with a fire. Week six, the bye. Week seven against the Broncos in Denver. Hopefully better luck there than in real life. Sam, with a fire. Random three-parter. Uh, which food do you, brand do you think is overrated? food or brand do I think is overrated I'm gonna say breakfast cereal I'm gonna say oh as a whole which drink brand is overrated I would say soda as a whole as well what food drink is underrated <sighs> underrated what's, what's uh what's underrated a food that's underrated or a drink water uh no I'm food That's a tough one. That's a tough one. A food that's underrated. It doesn't get the press or the acknowledgement that it deserves. Mm. You know what? I I think that this is uh Yeah, you know what? Okay. I'm going to go with this answer. I don't think it's the greatest answer. And I, cause I don't think it's that underrated, but it is that good. And it's mother loving potatoes. And that might be the Irish in me, but good God potatoes. I went, when I went out to eat last night, um, went to this place I never went to before and they served these potatoes and they were like candied. Oh my God. It was, they were like some of the greatest potatoes I've ever had hash browns. Come on. They, not that at the restaurant, but just in general, Come on now. There's so many things you could do with potatoes. They're delicious. They're hearty. Potatoes are the goat. Are the goat. So, Mo, with a tour. Let's play GM. Woolen for uh, pick 25 and 41. I like Tariq Woolen. No, I wouldn't give up that, though. Joe, do I ever heard of the Dynamite Kid, the wrestler? I have. 
I have, I have, I have. Game on Fire, favorite movie that's come out in the last 10 years? Oh, God. Mm, everything Everywhere All at Once. I really like that. After Sun is up there. Um, but yeah, Everything Everywhere All at Once. I'd put Dune and Do Part 2 up there too. But yeah, Everything Everywhere All at Once. It was so original and it was just, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. So I'd probably say that. So Lux, six days till the home opener. Let's go Rangers. There you go. Grace to fire. Biggest wrestling hot take. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, actually, I said my wrestling hot take, I think, last uh, week. They, the WrestleMania 26 match between uh, Shawn Michaels and Undertaker, I don't think was amazing. I thought it was good. I don't think it was anywhere near their WrestleMania 25 match, though. Yeah, and I was hyped up for that match. Yeah, so I think that it, it was it was good. It wasn't amazing, though. That's my hot take. Demski, 30 months! Let's go, baby. Look at the Packers' opponents. What game do you think is the most exciting one for next year? Not the Bears. Bro, CJ Stroud, Jordan Love. Give me a break. Also excited for the Colts one too, but Texans, come on now. Tim, what's the high, high, uh, so with the high likelihood, Chicago and Washington both take QBs and play each other again this year. What primetime spot do you think they'll get? Thursday night, three years in a row, perhaps? I think either Thursday night or Monday. I think Thursday night or Monday is a very, uh, a very safe bet, I would say. Yeah, I'd say that. I'd say that. But probably Thursday night again. Big Bo! With Twain. I believe in McDonald that Seattle will finally be able to have a top 10 defense. Hoping that's better a better O-line. It'll give Sam a chance. Uh, just some faith over here. But Seattle's such a weird team right now. They are. They're like this weird team where they weren't expected to compete, not this past season, but the season before with Geno. And then they're like, oh, we did it. Like, we made the playoffs. So, yeah, it, they're in a weird spot, but they have the talent on the roster. And I don't think they're that far away. I think they're like a few pieces away. They do need to figure out what the, what's going to happen at quarterback. But yeah, they, they'll win football games. Super with Terrence. Fun fact, in 1922, the Chicago Staleys were playing in the Chicago Cubs baseball stadium. So George Halas changed their name to the Bears, Papa Bear. Any chance the Bears take anyone other than Caleb? Uh, it is a fun fact. I don't think so. No, uh, again, like I said, what I heard at the Combine was that the, they, the Bears literally told Caleb, like, yeah, we're going to draft you. And that's when Justin Fields unfollowed them. So... Take it with a grain of salt, but yeah. Came out, Jerry, I need to watch it. I've been wanting to. It's worth the watch. It's worth the watch. I also haven't forgotten about the 10 shows movie thing. JMB with tour. If you had to fight a starting QB, who? Least owner? Hmm. Hmm. If I had to fight a starting QB. Oh, God. I'm getting my ass kicked by any of them. All right. Let's see. All 32 starting QBs. Okay. Let's see. Let's see here. I'm not fighting. Nope. 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 You know what? Jared Stidham <laughs> of the Denver Broncos. I mean, I'll pop. I'll. I'll. I'll attempt to fight Deshaun Watson just for morality. But um, yeah. I'll. I'll. Uh, I'll fight Stidham. I'll fight. I'll fight Stidham. I'm probably not going to win, but. Why not? Least? Bro, I don't I don't want to fight like any of these kids. Gardner Minshew would pull out a knife like from his underwear, so. Joe, if I was a historical movie whose inaccuracies felt unnecessary in your opinion? I mean, that's almost every historical movie ever. Um, there have been a few. I mean, I'm trying to think of like one that particular there's not that usually doesn't bother me though because i don't really go into a fictional movie expecting it to get like everything right you know what i mean um no that's a good one that oh you know what there you go pearl harbor there you go just a bad movie just unnecessary stuff yeah just just nothing just nothing good, you know? The Greatest Showman, haven't seen it. Haven't seen it. Jason, if I, how many really good primetime games will there be this year? If Amazon does not kill the scriptwriter, that is. I'm hoping for at least six. I'm hoping because the numbers have been low these past two seasons. You know, I watched them all. This, it's been pretty darn low. It's been pretty darn low. Yeah, you laugh during, uh, probably, yeah, because it's such a horrible movie. It's so bad. It's so 
Pearl Harbor was trying to be too much like Titanic. I completely and totally agree. Completely and totally agree. They're like, oh, let's go like the disaster, like historical romance thing. And it just was, ugh, ugh. So I did watch Zone of Interest. Yes, I did. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, that was a, that was a night. So what wound up happening is I, is I rented it and I don't know if anyone has seen the Zone of Interest uh, yet. First of all, when it comes to sound design, which is not something I usually comment on a whole ton, but dude, the sound design was horrifying. Like legitimately horrifying. So that was scary. Um, and then it, it was it was to say it was good. It was a lot. <laughs> like it it was a lot. It's definitely definitely a slow burn. Um but yeah, it was it's a lot. It was a lot. Definitely deserved to win um the international Oscar. Okay, on to our favorite historical fiction movie show. Uh movies easy. That's 1917. 1917. Yeah, it's super unsettling. Very very unsettling. FPS and Fire, most underrated movie recently. I had to put up The Man from Uncle, live action <coughs> Archer. That was amazing front to back. I actually never saw it. That's the one with Superman, right? Um, right, it was Henry Cavill in that. But I would say it's not like super recent. And I think it's starting to make a resurgence, especially online a little bit. But The Nice Guys with Russell Crowe and uh, Ryan Gosling is a very, I actually watched it like shortly after it came out. Um, I watched it and I did not, I only got through like a third of the movie. I'm like, I don't like this. And then I went back and watched it actually this year. And I was like, oh, this is a, that's a good movie. That's a good movie. Dan Beard to her. Jerry Jones versus Tom Grassi. Who wins? Does he have the high ground? Is he in his perch? Either way, Tom Grassi. Uh, let's see. Dana with a uh, fiver. Next season reaction video. Probably Jets or Ravens. Probably Jets or Ravens. Yeah, on tour. 1917 is a great movie. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. No, Luke. Not malignant. Never. All right, we do have two packages. Papa Grassi uh, actually was able to swing by the P.O. box, so able to do that. So this is from Sean. All right, let's go. Let's go here. Let's go here. I actually have never seen Paddington. I actually heard really good things. Like, I heard Paddington 2 is legitimately a good movie, but I have not, I have not seen it. It sounds like liquid. I hope I, I hope you're allowed to shake it. It sounded like liquid. Uh, let's see. Come in! Makes sense for you to say that, uh, since it won the Oscar Best Sound as well. 1970 is the only movie where I can remember the entire movie in order. Yeah, that movie was crazy. It Did it win the Oscar for sound? I didn't even know that. I did not even know that, actually. I know. Oh, I also, yeah, I saw Poor Things as well. And Poor Things was uh, really, really good. Because I watched it, yeah, it was the night of the Oscars. Um, because it's... She won the, it was right, M Stone won the Oscar. And I was like, really? Okay, let's see how good this is. And it was good. A note. Oh. And Gato stickers. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Let's read the note first. Because that is proper. I am. Dom, my favorite brewery and go-to spot recently closed, but I snagged some barrel-aged stuff before the doors closed. Let me know what you think. I also have a peach brandy and there are hidden stickers. Your Cleveland area favorite, Sean. Hey, appreciate you, Sean. Thank you, thank you. Oh, and there's more, there's more stickers. Hey, there we go. There we go. Oh, yeah, so it's olive oil. Yes. Olive oil. Of course. Of course. Michael, I still haven't seen All Quiet on the Western Front. I got bullied last year because I hadn't watched it yet, and I still just did not watch it yet. Yeah, that's why, Sam, that's why, because I thought Lily was going to win because I saw Killers of the Flower Moon, and she was great in it, and I was like, oh, okay got here Ooh, the innovators dilemma 10-year reserve rye whiskey double oatmeal imperial stout oh boy in a barrel wow that's actually hold on one second so it was brewed in march 8th of 22 the uh olive oil barreled 4 7 2022 damn in barrel 687 days and it was bottled uh, February 26th. Look at that. Look at that. Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice. 
That's another one. I'm cautiously optimistic. Thank you so much for this, Sean. Yeah, I will try this and I will let you know. Okay, all right. I'm a little intimidated, but it'll be good. All right, I appreciate you. I appreciate you, appreciate you. All right, that's some olive oil. That is some olive oil. And we got gatos. And we got gatos. What could be better? All right, uno mas. Please hold. Oh, no, hold on. There's another, there's another sticker. Eh. And another gato. There we go. There we go. I have not seen the holdovers yet. I have not. I have not. Joe, if I think Sting Undertaker could have lit up to the hype if it happened in 15, or do you think the last time it should have happened it was 2011? It probably 2011 was probably going to be the best one. I don't think it would have lived up to the hype. It would have just been cool to see, though. It would have been cool to see. But, alas, was not meant to be. There's plenty of dream matches we missed out on. Uh, plenty, plenty. All right, look, this is from Aaron. All right, let's see here. Let's see here. Yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, just gonna open this. So, we'll see. Uh, let's see. Who do I think the Packers will take in the draft? I don't know about individual players yet, but position groups. They're probably gonna target the secondary, but they need to target linebacker. They have to badly. Big Mo, if I would draft for the Packers, the Eagles wide receiver room or the Seahawks wide receiver room. Ooh. I mean, I like our receiver room. That's the thing. I really like the Packers receiver room. Maybe because of depth, the Seahawks. But, dude, I love Devontae Smith so much. And A.J. Brown's a beast. But I love Devontae Smith. Just by Cam Sutton situation is the most crazy thing I've seen recently for the Lions. Yeah, I, I re only was able to read a little bit of that. But, yeah, it, it looked bad. It looked very bad. Ooh. What do we have? Her. Playing kettle chips all the way. Okay. Okay. Exactly, Tracy. Exactly. Hey! I recognize that. There we go. Full 30 and 30. Come on now. Isaiah with a fire. Tom! Love your content. You're my favorite YouTuber. Sad I got to miss the chat, but I got a date. Go, Pat, go! Hey! <laughs> Isaiah, enjoy the date. Have yourself a grand old time. Hell yeah. Let's go, let's go, let's go. All right. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> House and garage are probably full of random things at this point. They are. Yes, they are 100% full of... There's so many things. There's so many things in there. Therefore, All right, what we got? <gasps> Paintings? Oh? Oh? Okay. Okay. Is there going to be art? Hey, Coach Season 6. It's coming. I've been thinking about it more and more. Coach Season 6. Photos from 30 and 30 in Charlotte. I will. I can't not recognize those uh, bay doors there. Let's go. I will go on vacation eventually. 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 Listen, coach is going to be amazing. All right, let's see what we got here. Oh, now I'm excited. Ooh. Can you please say hi, Tristan? There's a lot of ends. Locks with a fire. Bengals got 10 picks for this draft. Perhaps they could trade up for one of the big combine performers for the Longhorns. Yeah, they could. I mean, they're going to have flexibility. One million percent. So they have so many draft picks. Wouldn't be surprised. So let's see. Come out with a fire. Sorry. Doesn't make sense. But uh, what's Guilty Pleasure movie? And what based on a true story movie do you like despite not following history it's based on? Guilty Pleasure movie is the Thomas Jane Punisher. One million percent. One million percent that. Um, and then based on true story... Ooh, that's a good question. If Tristan fell off a cliff, he might have. Um, based on true events. And you're like, no, none of this really happened. Ooh, that's a good one. I don't know. Because, like, I feel like that was a thing for a really long time. It was like, oh, this is a true story. And then just as Hollywood took more and more liberties by making movies that are just, like, based on true events, which means, like, they shared the same first name... I feel like that's not a selling point uh, like a whole lot anymore unless it's like an Oppenheimer like obvious like biopic if that makes sense. Real cheese with a fire. If you weren't a Packers fan, I had your heart ripped out multiple times, would you be more likely to like the Seahawks? Never. Never. Never, never, and never. All right, what do we got here? I'm I'm excited. What do we got here? Okay. Okay. Hold on. Let's see. Bro. Come on now. Come on now. 
Let's effing go. Come on now. Damn. That's effing awesome. It even has like the tape mark in it. That's so dope. And then you got the beach. Come on now. Oh. Damn, that's freaking awesome. That is so effing cool. Thank you so much for that, Aaron. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is so, so cool. I still, like, I hope you know, like, anytime, like, Andrea's sending, like, the, uh, the, the crochet, the, like, freaking coat GCU characters, this stuff, it is still very odd and, like, incredibly, incredibly heartwarming that people make, like, art or, like, anything based off of, like, the saga and or coach. It's so cool. I'll never get over it, too. Thank you so much for this. This is so nice. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Jordan, the Chiefs won all three Super Bowls, trailing by 10. Are they just bored and trying to make things interested? Yeah, pretty much they're cats, right? There's like, oh, we'll, we'll play around with our food. And then they played around too much with Tom Brady, and then they destroyed him. Big modifier, WWE question. Would you rather be on a tag team with the big show, Younger Edge, Eddie Guerrero, or Rey Mysterio? Eddie Guerrero all day. Eddie Guerrero all day. Edge would be super fun, don't get me wrong, but Eddie Guerrero all day. All day. And that's not even close. Rey Mysterio's cool. But come on now. Come on. Uh, Rio Tour, <laughs> potatoes, boil them, mash them, stick them in a bracket. Don't even put them in a stew. Don't even do it. Guys, welcome to Fiverr. Funnily enough, just described uh, to friend the new Final Fantasy VII games or a movie based on true events with the OG Final Fantasy VII being the true events. That's fair. Yeah, I heard. Again, I did not play it, so don't don't attack me. But I heard they changed the ending of like the one that just came out, and people were not pleased. People were not pleased. So I don't know what happened, but I'm so sorry you're angry. I'm so sorry. Uh, Janine, I had to look through my lessons. I looked briefly right before going live, and I didn't have the ones that would be new. So I might have to wait and get, um, I have to go grab my hard drive and, like, upload them. Samuel, wait there. Have you seen the show Infinity Train? It's so good. Uh, if you haven't, absolutely, should, by the way, uh, you should. By the way, Six Feet Under on your top 10 best shows list. Okay, I actually not, I, first of all, no, I have not even heard of Infinity Train. What is it on, and what's it about, and is it, sounds awesome. Uh, one, I did see the Beetlejuice trailer. And then Six Feet Under. <sighs> Here's what I'll say. For the time in my life in which I watch Six Feet Under, I don't think I appreciated that show for what it was. I watched it, like, when I was 20... Yeah, it was, like, really early 20s. Like, really early 20s. And it was really good. Like, it was really, really good. Um, but I don't think... Like, it doesn't resonate with me except, like, the ending and that finale and the song Breathe Me. Um, but, yeah, I don't... Not yet. It wouldn't be in my top 10 yet. But I that is probably due for a rewatch at some point. I still haven't seen The Wire. I want to see The Wire. Everyone will yell at me. I haven't seen The Sopranos. Never seen it. Um, but, yeah. Leftovers is 100% on my list. 100%. Now, I'm trying to think of those shows still. George Tour is Scrubs in the top 10. I have not seen all of Scrubs. I have not. I have not seen all of Scrubs, and I'm so sorry. So, so sorry. Helldivers 2, I wish. I haven't had the time to. I, I really want to because it looks so fun, though. It looks so much fun. I have not seen Suits. I was on the dip. I was in the, like, earlier generation of USA shows, like Monk, Burn Notice, Psych. Big Mo, what's your favorite WWE entrance of all time? I loved Breaking Bad, so yeah, I, I probably would love The Sopranos. Um, my favorite WWE entrance of all time. Now, are you talking about for a wrestler, or are you talking about like a one-off? Because we're going one-offs, like WrestleMania 20, Undertaker, of course. Um, I think that was in your house for Shawn Michaels, right, when he's down the zip line. It's just iconic. Um, I will say, and I'm not even being sarcastic, Recently, one of the best entrances was Bad Bunny in Puerto Rico. One of the best entrances, just because it was so electric. Super dope. Um, I mean, again, he's my favorite wrestler. So, 
I'm I'm gonna say Brett the Hitman Hart. Like as always, like you know, giving the glasses to the kid. Come on, but I will say Shawn Michaels was also. I loved both of them, but yeah. Really to her. I'm behind with Dune Two, but seeing Godzilla minus one yet. I'm not. No, because I can't get it anywhere. So I went, I tried to find it in theaters. It wasn't in theaters when I was available to go see it. So that's gone. And then, uh, because I was doing the season, then the black and white version came out and the same thing. It was like weird season, mid-season, I received whatever it was, and I couldn't go. So now I tried to find it streaming and it's not streaming yet unless it came out within the last like 48 hours. And then uh, I didn't want to, you know, sail the seven seas because like one, I wanted to support them. And two, um, I don't even know there's a good version out there. Chris with a fire. Looks like I might have to scale back my message to you. Pay for Max now. That House of the Dragons almost back. Which team are you, green or black? Listen. F team green. Okay. Because they are garbage. Usurpers. And they know. Throne ain't theirs. So, that answers your question. But yeah, no, I'm super excited for uh, House of the Dragon. It looks pretty dope. And for them to release two uh, trailers is cool. John with uh, Razor Ramon. God, so classic. I loved Razor Ramon, yeah. See, that's the thing. For me, growing up, because I was like young when Razor Ramon, like that's when I was watching like Intercontinental Championship match, you know, the ladder match between HBK and Razor Ramon. Dude, like, that was my childhood, and I always remembered, like, not even enjoying the match because I was so sad that Shawn Michaels lost. Like, and I would be, like, I was young, young, so I'd watch the match, and I'm like, maybe he'll win this time because I didn't understand permanence or the past yet. So, um, when he became Scott Hall, it kind of, like, ruined the childlike wonder for me because then I was like, oh, that's not Razor Ramon. I'm done. So... That was my relationship with uh, Razor Ramon. Hector, Tom, you think the bloodline has completely jumped the shark or is it not at the peak yet? Monk was something else, uh, good lord. What's your favorite championship design? Spinner for you. Really, Spinner? Really, Winged Eagle forever. It's Winged Eagle. You know, the Undisputed one's cool, but it's Winged Eagle. And in my, like, Big Goldie is, is fine. It's an iconic look. It's a classic look. But the Winged Eagle belt will forever be, like, my favorite championship belt. Always. Now, for the Bloodline thing, I think it's not that they jumped the shark. I think that when they're cooking, they're cooking. But there are long lulls in between just because of Roman's wrestling schedule, right? So, for them to be like, yeah, it's this, like, long, like, multi-year story. Yeah, but... There's significant gaps in those stories. I think they look really good on like highlight and video packages because you put it all together, especially like when it's like at its peaks, then it looks like one really cohesive storyline. Now, that being said, it's also really difficult to tell a story and a new episode every single week of the year, right? And not have any filler or, you know, gaps. But I just think like, even having Jay lose at SummerSlam and like Jimmy portrays him like that, that for me was kind of like, okay, well like what's the point now? That was kind of like it for me for that aspect. And I kind of got bored of that storyline super quick. So I'm glad that it's back now, but I think it definitely has less of an impact than it did last year. If that made sense. Cause the Sammy stuff was done so, so well. Sorry for that really long winded answer about current WWE storylines. Joy with fire. If we're going one-offs, Dominic Mysterio's WrestleMania entrance was amazing. Peak. Like, so good. And explaining that to somebody, too. Like, imagine explaining that to somebody who doesn't watch wrestling. And you're just like, yeah, this is Rey Mysterio's son. He's wrestling his dad at WrestleMania. And, like, he got put in a holding cell for, like, a couple hours. And so now his entire character is a, a prisoner who's done hard time. And then he gets transported in cuffs in the back of a police vehicle. It, like, it is peak wrestling. It's peak ridiculousness. And that's why wrestling can be awesome. Allison Matura, Tom, have you seen Human Centipedes? I saw the first one and I said, I'm good. I'm good. Got me on a fire. Sorry to say, but I've never finished Breaking Bad. Ooh. I remember being depressed after each episode and felt like each episode was two hours long. 
there's definitely some episodes like I I feel like Breaking Bad is a tough show to binge because like they're heavy episodes. They are longer, but they're like heavy episodes and a lot happens. Um and this was really kind of I don't want to say before streaming, but before it became like insanely popular. So it wasn't that kind of format. Gods with fire. I lost my crap when Triple H came out of live motorhead at WrestleMania. Uh, oh, I can't remember, but I was streaming Lemmy. Yes. Yes. Whenever Motorhead performed, it was dope. Galcio Tour. Uh, have you seen Wednesday's Dynamite? No, I have not had a chance to see it yet. I have not. I saw who won, though. Everything gets spoiled, but I did see who won. It looked pretty dope. Daniel, Tom, not sure if you like Lego, but you see the Dune and D&D sets. I haven't, I think, I think I saw one of the copters, maybe, for Dune. I just saw the D&D sets, and D&D sets look pretty dope. I was, like, super into Legos for a while, uh, definitely growing up. Like, Legos were my thing, and I still like them. The problem is, like, I just don't have room for them here. Like, I, there's there's no more space. Like, everything is occupied. Like, the bookshelf is filled. There's boxes over there. Like, I, I'm out of room. I, I, I done did it. So um, I haven't bought them because I was like, first of all, I need the time to do, to, like, you know, assemble it. Two, then protect it from the cats. And three, find a place for it. They look dope. Vader in a tour. Psych is top 10 show for me. Come on, son. Psych is great. Psych is really, really good. Glorious with a fire. Picture it. The New York ball. Only between the Jets and Giants. Whoever wins comes the New York team. Loser demoted to NCAA. Done. Yes. Lux with fire. Love how Oppenheimer uh, was the movie for the first, uh, yeah, that Robert Downey Jr. got his Oscar. Yeah. Yeah, and he was great in that movie, too. He was really, really good. Jonathan with tenor. Tom, how are you? I have a friend named Lydia who I haven't spoken to or seen since COVID. Hung out last night. It's like she never left. Also, I got new records, and I got the National. Yo. First of all, hell yeah, the National rules. Is it one of their newer albums? One of their newer ones, it's okay, but they're so, their music's so great. Uh, that's awesome. Those friends are also dope when you get to, like, not see each other forever, but then you just pick up where you left off. Those are super dope friends. Also, Hosier released new music today, and I really liked two of the songs. It was really good. It was really, really good. I also was jamming to Rainbow Kit and Surprise. Oh, speaking of, listen, for the dozens of people in here that know the saga of Rainbow Kit and Surprise, I have loved Rainbow Kit and Surprise for years now, for quite some time. I don't want to say I was a hipster. And I like discovered them because I didn't like I found them like maybe two albums ago. But amongst my friend group, I was like the only one listening to them. And at first I was like, okay, this is like a weird vibe, but it's like cool. And the voice is like super unique. And like the more I listened to them, I was like, oh no, like this is really, really good. And so I found out because I was talking to Jess one random time. She was either on GPS or it was like after a stream or after GPS. And she brought up Rainbow Kitten Surprise. I was like, oh my God, you love, like you, you know who Rainbow Kitten Surprise is. Cause I didn't really know a ton of people who did. And so she's like, yeah, she's like, I really like them. I'm like, oh my God. So we like bonded about that. And I like brought it up a few times when it was just like Perna and I, I was like, yeah. And like, Jess, like Rainbow Kitten Surprise. That's super cool. And Perna just like one day after the show language, Lily just goes, okay, I'm the one who fucking likes Rainbow Kitten Surprise. She heard about them from me. And he was just like a, ha, oh, she didn't find them. I found them. And it was so effing hysterical because Perno was just like, no, it was me. I did it. I have the music taste. So then I was like, oh, I didn't know you liked Rainbow Kitten Surprise. And so then we bonded over that. And so then what wound up happening was, Freaking Red Rocks, which is one of the best venues ever to go see a concert. I saw that once, and I was like, this is amazing. Perno obviously lives in Colorado. Rainbow Kitten Surprise was going to Red Rocks. And this was a few years ago, and I was like, oh, man. Honestly, like, I would go. Like, I would go just for this. Like, I will get on a plane and go. And so the first time we were going to go, Carmi got super sick. And this was, I think, in, like, 21. And so, like... COVID was like, who knew, whatever, whatever. And so if Carmi had COVID, right, like that was going to go to the family and then like I couldn't fly out to Colorado, get COVID and then get stuck there and we wouldn't be able to go to the concert anyway or someone would be miserable, what have you. 
So we wound up canceling and Brandon gave the tickets to like either a family friend or a family member or something. And they went, and that was like one of the last shows they had because then they canceled their tour after that. So we didn't get to go see Rainbow Kitten Surprise a few years ago. Then it was either, I think it was two years ago. So 2022, maybe they were doing it again. They were doing multiple show at Red Rocks. And I was like, Perna, this is the year. Like we are doing this. And he's like, yes. So we go, we're going to buy tickets. Like I'm like talking to him. I'm like, yep, I'm going to see you soon. Blah, blah, blah. And then they canceled their tour. And I was like, so not only did I miss out on seeing Rainbow Kitten Surprise, who I never saw it before, I also missed out on seeing them at Red Rocks, where, like, again, angelic concert venue. So what wound up happening is they are performing, they just announced a few shows, and one of them's in New York, and I'm in New York. So I said, okay, cool. So this morning, I was like, I'm not going to be able to go see him with Perna. They're playing in Colorado, but it's not Red Rocks, so it's not really worth it. You know, I can go see him here. Perna, they're doing, like, three shows in Colorado. So I was like, okay. So I literally set an alarm on my phone this morning. I was like, all right, 10 a.m. Do I go on sale? I'll be there. Log in. I'm in the waiting room, blah, 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 blah. I get in to buy tickets at 10.01 and they're all sold out. Every single one. And she's like, yep, we got no tickets. So uh, that was frustrating. I was like, cool, because they're only doing one New York show and they're doing like three in Colorado. So what wound up happening is I was like, all right, let me just check and see because it'll be like scalpers or whatever. And I'm not going to pay like top dollar for that because then the scalpers win. So somebody must have bought like extra tickets because they I literally just was kept refreshing and someone was selling them. And they were like 15 bucks above retail. And I was like, OK, cool. Got them. So finally in May, I'm going to see Rainbow Kitten Surprise. And I am so excited. So we did it. Jordan Fire, what current wrestler would you want to put through a table? For me, it's like, ooh, Takahashi. Mm. Which current wrestler do I want to put through a table? Oh, put me through a table. Oh. 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 Oh, I don't want to go through a table again. Mm. You know what? Hmm. If we're going just from a safety, Jay Lethal. I mean, right? He wrestled Ric Flair, and Ric Flair's still alive, so. He'll take care of me. He'll make sure I won't die. So, that'd be nice. That'd be nice. Alex with a fire. I heard about Adam Sandler saying a first script for Happy Gilmore 2 is written. I never thought it was going to happen. What's your opinion? Originality is dead. No. Uh, yeah, that. I hope it's not a cash grab. I hope it's not. That's with a fiver. Tom, mixed feelings as a Seahawks fan. I'm glad we're cleaning house, which has been long overdue, but I wish we did more in free agency. As I say every single year, doing more in free agency doesn't always lead to success. Always. The, the number one thing I'll always remember, and this was when, this was before PatCast, this is when I was uh, writing Magna Grants, was when uh, in free agency, there was, was it, I think it's Kevin, I don't remember, it's Bird, B-Y-R-D, he was a safety um, who did, had like a really, really good season. And the Packers really needed safety. Not much changes in life. And I remember I was like, if the, pa the Packers have to get him, if the Packers don't get him, they're going to be bad. And it's just like, need to get him. He winds up going to the Saints and I'm like devastated. And people are online and they're just like, oh, the Packers didn't do anything in free agency again, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, winds up signing with the Saints and like does absolutely nothing. And I think winds up getting cut a couple years later. So Free agency, like, is a great way that you can build your roster 100%, and you can get better and build depth and get all that great stuff. But doing more does not always make you the better team. Big Mo, would fire favorite wrestler, Eddie, favorite entrance, Edge, favorite rivalry, Undertaker, Batista. Ooh! WrestleMania 23 match is dope, too. Favorite era, Attitude. All right, wrestler is uh, Bret Hart. Entrance, all time, also gonna be Bret Hart then. Favorite rivalry, Bret Hart and HBK. <laughs> it's going to be up there. Favorite era would be pre-Attitude because like I kind of stopped watching around the Attitude era. So, yeah. That was just because that's my childhood stuff. Uh, let's see. Tomas with a uh, tour. It's your favorite hat on the back wall. Top guy right over there. I always love that kind of static effect. Oh, there's, there's, there's lore with that. 
Daniel to Fiverr. Think about it. Pick a top five game or TV series. Go Ted Lasso, Scrubs, Newsroom. Ooh. Avatar last night, but Clone Wars, don't ask me if I have ADHD. No, just rock and roll, baby. Just rock and roll. All right, Ted Lasso, that first season was amazing. Second season was good. Third ended strong. Yeah, it's good. Joy to Fire. Tom, you listen to the band? Uh, I don't think so. Hmm. Let me hold on, see. What kind of music do they do? Nope. Stop it. I did not want to look up a Siamese cat. Okay. It, for some reason, keeps on auto-correcting it. To si Can we stop? Oh, finally got them. Okay, got it. Mm. From South America. Okay. An Argentine electro-pop electro rock band. All right, cool. Y'all yeah, check them out. Appreciate it. Appreciate it, appreciate it. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah, let's make sure I miss anything. Do, 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 do. Cut! If you ever watched the uh, official Jaguar Gator 9 and know about his dumb decisions, uh, what's one he didn't cover that you thought should have covered? Oh, I don't know. I mean, he's done so many. I gotta be honest with you. I don't, I don't even know what he hasn't done at this point. But, yeah. I mean, the most obvious one is the Falcons in the Super Bowl, right? Like, it, it is. It is. Vanessa Tour shows at Red Rocks are incomparable, right? Vanessa, they're so good. They're so good. And then if it's like a clear night too, like you can see Denver, it's dope. Gods with fire. No crap winning the offseason doesn't equate to anything. My Chargers have my offseason titles. <laughs> have <laughs> more than the Yankees have World Series titles. <laughs> yeah. Well, but a fire. Uh, Dobbs reminds me of Donald Driver. We need to prioritize lock and him long term. His hands, route running, sideline, footwork. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm really curious to see how he's going to play. I really want to see him build upon that because he had uh, especially a strong finish at that Dallas game. He was insane. Um, but I want to make sure he doesn't get lost with the other talent. And so I'm hoping for another season of him being even more elevated than where he was last year. Super Hotel. Remind me of when I had tickets to go see Valerie's Harper's one-woman show as Golden Mayor in Fort Lauderdale. But Hurricane Wilma canceled them. The Valerie passed away. Would have been phenomenal. You want to talk about regrets of not seeing anything? I didn't see Linkin Park. I had, again, I don't think I could. I, I was in high school. Yeah, probably could not have afforded that. But my friends went to Jones Beach to go see him. And, uh, yeah, not going. Ugh. Ugh. So I never saw Linkin Park. It was one of my favorite bands growing up. Never saw them live. Yeah, what a fire. Favorite halftime show ever. Also, who would you like to have perform? Give me Metallica with Iron Maiden and Judas Priest. Um... Yes, but favorite halftime ever? It's Prince. It's Prince. Michael Jackson, yeah, it's good. It's Prince. It's Prince. It is. Got wait to her. Uh, wait, Falcons was worse than Seahawks Super Bowl 49? That's true. That is true. Yeah, that one's probably worse. It's probably worse. Hey, pal, to her favorite song lyric. Ooh. That's a good one. Hey, RBT's in here. Favorite Madden YouTuber. There's this guy named Kurt Penk. Uh, RBT. RBT's uh, videos are just filled with so much nuance. And may I say a touch of grace? Of course. Of course. How you doing, buddy? Hope you're doing well. Favorite song lyric. Probably Rise Against. There actually is... Uh, there's one... Mm, yeah, there's definitely a bunch of Rise Against ones. There's a bunch of Rise Against ones. There's a Mumford & Sons one that I always really liked. Um, it's lead me to the truth and I will follow you with my whole life. I always really, really liked that line. Uh, plenty of great ones from Swing Life Away from Rise Against. Yeah. I also really like uh, from Heads Unworthy. Like there, uh, there's one line that I'm not... That was the line. It's like, I'm not here for fame or fortune. I'm here for you. It, like, the way he hits the you, it's good. George, to imagine a Tom Super Bowl halftime slipknot. Yeah, I'm down. Monster Return, favorite Linkin Park song. Ooh, RBT, you're always welcome, my man. Come on. Uh, all right. It's going to throw a curveball with you. I mean, in the end is amazing, right? Somewhere I Belong is amazing. Right? They're, they're, they're so good. Crawling, amazing. They're so good. There's so many great Linkin Park songs. And then that's not even talking about reanimation. That's not talking about collision course. Amazing. 
But with you, like growing up, oh my God, I loved that song. I played that song so much. Ishi, we are talking about Lincoln Park. With you is so good. Somewhere I Belong is when they got like, in the end got them like really, really famous. And then dude, Hybrid Theory and Meteora to like follow that up. Ugh, run away from Hybrid Theory is incredible. Incredible. I'm 100% gonna listen to Hybrid Theory tonight. Lanny the Fire, who's the real GOAT? Dak Prescott has five wild card appearances. Mahomes has zero. That's it. Lock it down. Dak Prescott, better than Patrick Mahomes. Crawling, numb, so good. It's amazing. Hey, yeah, numb is another, just media, like those two albums, in my opinion, are like perfect. Perfect. I have not seen the video for Friendly Fire. I heard it. It was solid. It was solid. I mean, so I will be very honest. So when Linkin Park, Hybrid Theory, loved, obviously. So um, Meteora, loved. Reanimation, took me a while, but I really got into it. Collision Course, amazing. And then it was, was it Minutes to Midnight? Minutes to Midnight, when they kind of got away from the, how do I describe that? kind of like the harder rock and it was a little bit more i don't want to say poppy but it, it was definitely like softer i did not like it there was some stuff i really did like there were some songs i really really liked on that album but it kind of was like uh okay and then they never really got back to it i heard their last album like their actual last one kind of like got back to it but yeah that's what i like fell in love with like lincoln park with was like they were super like just like hard rock so yeah, I really, really enjoyed it. But I know there's plenty of people who love like their older, like their more recent stuff. And that's cool. Red with a fire shower, the day always hits me right in the feels. Yeah, like that's a great song. It's a great song. I just like my love for them just was like more for their like, I want you to scream. Justin with a tenor. Sometimes on a good weekend night, I'll pull up GTA talk radio station on a music radio station. Help me put me to sleep. Either Chatterbox, V-Rock. Oh my God, V-Rock. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Dude, GTA Vice City. Dude, like that, I told you, like that, were those were formative years watching my cousin play and I like got to play like secretly because I wasn't allowed to play Grand Theft Auto for a while. And then like just listening to that because that was like Quiet Riot. That was Twisted Sister. That was Judas Priest. I'm pretty sure Sabbath or Ozzy was on there too. Iron Maiden. Like, that's where I heard all them, like, all that type of music. And, like, my cousin listened to that type of music. And I was like, oh, I really like this. And that got me into that whole genre of music. So, that's some good stuff. Jason, welcome to the posse. Appreciate you, appreciate you. Am I the only one who doesn't like Linkin Park? No. Eh. Again, it, like, for me, it was just, like, I was pure 90s. It was pure 90s. It was so good. Also, we didn't even crack a first beer yet. And we are about to get to minute 69. Jordan, would fire y'all sleeping on the Catalyst, Lincoln Park. Also, my favorite three bands are Three Days Race, Lincoln Park, and Breaking Benjamin. Dude, like those are just formative years. Breaking Benjamin, I got into later, and I was just like, oh, like this is the harder version of the stuff I've listened to. Yeah, Three Days Grace, I Hate Everything About You. Yeah, oh, God. I remember that music video so well. HV with a tenor saying, do you think uh, you'd be in the same place that you are now professionally if you chose a different team than the Packers when you were six? Ooh, so like an alternate history where I still do all of this, but it's just for a different team. So like if I loved, ugh, if I loved another team as much as I love the Packers. I think it would depend on the team. I think it'd be really dependent on the team. Like if it was a team like, I mean, now the Chiefs, yeah, it's easier. Um, if it's a small market team, it might be tough. Might be tough. Like, I think there'd be a level, because, like, if I just worked the same, just did the exact same stuff, I think it would be there. But, um, yeah, the Packers were definitely... <laughs> I'm very grateful that I chose a team when I was six years old that had, like, such an incredible fan base because they were super supportive. Vikings, never. Never on God's green earth, no. Reasons with a tenor. How does it feel that you don't have to beg for a wide receiver this draft? It's so nice. It's so, it, it, it is very, very nice. Sydney, Tom, inspired me to create a podcast with my friend. We're filming our first episode soon. Thanks for all you do. And of course, go pack go. Let's go, baby. Hell yeah. Hey, and Kelsey, we're to her. 69 minute warning. Ladies and gentlemen, 
It is minute 69. Nice. Nice. Most overrated movie. Ooh. Ooh. Most overrated. That's tough. Most overrated. Oh man. All right. Oh, this this might uh this might ruffle some feathers. I understand historically. Sure. Fine. And is there a bias because me and musicals are not really a thing? Sure. Even though it's not really a musical, kind of. I think The Wizard of Oz is so freaking overrated. Oh my god. I think it is so massively overrated. <laughs> like, technical, historical, sure. But I'm talking about as, like, a movie, it is so, like, okay. Like, again, technical, absolutely. Use of color, absolutely. A historically, absolutely. Even how it, like, relates to, like, the Roaring Twenties and stuff like that. 100%, I'm with you. Just as a movie, I, mm, okay. All right. There it is. That's what gets me canceled. I get it. I understand. Theater people, I get it. I'm a theater kid. I get it. But, yeah. That's it. That's it. I know. I get it. I know. Just a tenor. Last year, uh, I seen Tesla in concert. Best concert I've been to as of now. They sounded good, if not better, than they sounded 30 years ago. I had a blast seeing them. Hell yeah. That's awesome. Especially, like, when bands, like, still got it. Yeah, that's super duper dope. Hell yeah. That's so, so cool. Yeah, what's your most underrated team? Oh, like, uh, like this season? Like, in, as, like I think the Cardinals, I think, are going to be pretty solid. I think the Cardinals are going to surprise some people. Yeah, I think so. Uh, Vader with a fire. Cage match uh, with Tom and Alt-Universe Vikings fan Tom. Who wins? Oh, me. 100%. 100%. It's not even close. You know, it probably will bite off my ear. Um, so, but I'll take him down. God's with Tanner. My grandma uh, wouldn't have had a dog named Charger when I was five-ish. I probably haven't been a Bears fan because my first dog a couple years later was named Bear. Also, most overrated movie was Titanic. Ooh. All right. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. That's how it does. Ghost with Tanner. Still don't know why the Vikings just plummeted in uh, rankings after Kirk left. Maybe it was a free agency and defense going to make moves at the draft. Uh, I don't know. Well, probably higher come then. Anyway, how's your week? Ghost, like, I get it, though, because there's uncertainty at the position. Because until they make that trade, right, to go up into wherever they're going to go, like, in the top five, and they get their guy, that's why. When they re-sign Justin Jefferson, it's going to look better. Just because right now there's questions with the Vikings. And, like, I like that you got Cashman. And I don't like his Packers fan. But, like, I think he's going to be really solid. He was solid with the Texans. I, good pass rusher. I think they're going to be better, especially with Flores. but. At the end of the day, yeah, it's just there's too many question marks uh, at offense. Like, you don't know how good a rookie QB is going to be. Aaron Jones on a one-year deal. Might be tough. Let's see. Tater with a fighter. Oh, it's a top NFL hot take. Mine's either Caleb Williams would be a bust or Christian Watson uh, won't have a bounce back here and get cut traded. Ooh. Um, a hot take. like currently in the league see it wouldn't be related to the draft because I haven't done enough into the draft yet mm. yeah I don't know about the kill but yeah Caleb Williams just going to Chicago man like I get it Bears fans like we, we gotta you have to also talk it up because you have to have hope you have to have hope that this time is going to be different because if not, then I don't know what you do at this point. Um, he's going into a, he's definitely going into a better situation. It's not great, but he, it's definitely a better situation. So I, I wouldn't say bust because I think Caleb Williams is incredibly talented. And because it's an improvement of, from what the bears have had before you're good. I think hot take Oh, 
oh, this hurts. I don't, like, I'm not sold on this in any way, shape, or form. I'm just going to say it this way. I'm concerned about Trevor Lawrence. I think he's a great quarterback, and I know he was injured, and I think that, I, like, I'm really hopeful that he has an amazing season. I'm a little concerned, though. I am a little concerned. It's, and I hate that because of how much I, like, like him and for Jacksonville. But, yeah, I'm a little concerned. Rachel, with a fire, someone who has uh, lived in Kansas City, Kansas most of their life, uh, I go the rest of my years not hearing about Wizard of Oz <laughs> again. I would be happy. See? See? That's it. Tommy with a fire, American Beauty is the most overrated white dude has a midlife crisis. <laughs> so unique. Oh, get in line. Wolf. Tom, do you ever notice uh, almost a nutmeg note in Allagash? Just curious. Long live, long live Allagash, long live the posse. Rouse forever. We're rousing. Uh, yes. It also depends. Like, there's times, like, there's batches where I feel like it's a little bit stronger. But, yeah, dude, I, I love it. It's so good. Lanny to fire. All universe Viking Tom probably spends too much time on a boat to train properly. True. Oh, but a fiver. Uh, for years, I hate everything about you would play in my head during Lions games. Valid. Valid, valid, valid. Samuel with a hundo! Personally, Six Feet Under is my favorite show. It's one of the few shows I've seen that both sticks with you after viewing and that is useful to think about during tough times. Very true. For example, it's helping me get through the recent death of my uncle, who I love dearly. Oh, Sam, I'm very sorry to hear about your uncle. That That's incredibly unfortunate, and I'm, I hope that... You know, you can begin to heal soon. Um, yeah, it's like, that's what I mean of, I got bits and pieces of that when I watched it. And like, it's a show I think I need now, like 10 years later, need to go back and watch and be like, okay, like, let me experience this in a different time in my life. Because I feel like that is something that's super important for any like, movie tv show literature like any type of media right like we talk about formative years and like lincoln park and developing uh like music and taste and all that great stuff but i feel like if you've gone through stuff or there is like a period in your life where you're feeling like oh this kind of sucks i feel like legitimately as a the amount of people who watched it i feel like for the pandemic like ted lasso like that first season was that show for a lot of people like that's where like the office is like a comfort show for people or something like that so i think depending on where you are in your life and like when you watch a piece of like media or read or whatever like i think it could change your perception or like outlook on it right that's yeah, that's pretty fair appreciate you samuel it's good to see you too uh also a tour you should listen to minus the bear summer angel Okay. All right. Dylan Latour, my hot take is Hertz is going to be benched. Ooh. I get it, but yeah. I'd, oh, yeah. That lots of stuff would have to happen. That would be rough. That would be rough, man. I hope that's not the case, too, because I like Jalen Hurts also. Yeah. No, like, again, the Trevor Lawrence thing, it's just, I'm a little concerned. I'm a little concerned. But I also don't entirely blame Trevor Lawrence for everything that's going on with the Jaguars right now. Just with a fire. Uh, I don't really have an overrated movie that I would pick. If I don't like a movie, I don't like it. That's fair. That's fair. Giggity, with a fire. What made you want to teach high school as opposed to other grades? And what, uh, in your after your experience, uh, after your experience, you go back and switch teaching elementary or college? Ooh, that's a great question. It's a really, really good question. Um, so there's a few things. One, fun, real quick. I'm just going to grab some water super quick. Mouth is dry. Be right back. Hold on. Oh, no. Okay. Please hold. Oh, God, I just need water. Yeah, okay. Ugh. All right, the teacher question. So when I thought about teaching, so my mom was a, a sergeant uh, in the NYPD, 
and then she transitioned to uh, teaching. So she taught special ed high school. And so my first experience with like an amazing teacher, like I had a really good third grade teacher, shout out Miss Ames. Um, but I had a really good 10th grade global teacher. And before then, history was something that I liked. My mom taught English, so English was something I liked too. I definitely liked the humanities more than like the math and science. I like science, but math, I just, I really don't think I ever had a good math teacher and that just didn't work out. Anyway, so I had a really good global 10 teacher. Shout out Mr. Egan. And it was the way that he delivered the content he would like dress up like as like Julius Caesar. Like he would like go and like run up and down the halls, like yelling and stuff. He would go in and just like be like very theatrical, but also like super serious. And he was also just like a really good teacher. And he was just one of the most like personable guys that you could talk to. And legitimately, like, especially when I started like being like, Oh, maybe I'll be a teacher. He was like the reason why um, I wanted to be a teacher. And so Going into that, I was like, okay. And I'd, I'd worked at daycares before and like preschools. Um, so I like, I'd volunteer because my mom worked there and like all that stuff. And I was like, okay. So I like could teach the younger, I had younger cousins at the time. So like, it was a thought that I was like, oh, I could teach elementary. And I think with my personality, like it would be, I'd probably do okay with it. Um, but it wasn't until I like got to college cause I was like still leaning towards high school. Um, and it was mostly because it would have been history and the real quick too. I almost wasn't a history teacher, um, because I was going to be a forensic scientist. Um, cause I loved CSI. Like I loved CSI and I was like, this is really interesting. And then they're like, you have to be good at math. And I was like, Oh, this is bad. But like I took forensic science like in high school. I really liked it. I was going to go to the University of New Haven um, because they had like Dr. Henry Lee, who was like the top like forensic scientist on the planet. Like they trained like the FBI there, a whole nine yards. So that's like where I was going to go. And then at the last minute, I was like, yeah, I don't think I want to do that. <laughs> so uh, I'm not good enough at math. And so I literally, I was like, all right, I'm going to go and uh, teach. And so it was my... I think it was my second semester of my freshman year. Um, I had the greatest professor I've ever had. And uh, his name was John Palanzar. He was the one who passed away um, somewhat recently. And he was he was legitimately the best teacher I ever had. I, I've, I've had some good teachers that like taught me how to write. I had some teachers that like in college, especially like there was a teacher who was like the papers can't be more than like two pages and so everyone was like, oh, sick. Like, that's awesome. Because as history guys, like, we're, you know, we're used to writing, like, five, six-page papers and stuff. So I was like, all right, two pages. And it is so difficult to, like, condense your writing, especially when you've gone through, like, a high school system and usually into college system where it's like, oh, page count matters. So you have to have a certain amount. So there's going to be flowery language. You're going to expand and expound on a lot of things. And to kind of do the complete opposite and like condense it to the point where it could only be two pages. Um, that was Michael Vargas. That was the guy who had the greatest email ever uh, because it was the first letter of his first name and his last name. So it was Vargasm. Just art. But yeah, he was a really, really great professor that I had. Um, yeah, so I had a few good ones um, in college, but... Yeah, John Palancar was the absolute best because his method of teaching was a straight up lecture, straight lecture. Sometimes he used like PowerPoints and stuff, but his usage of text, because he didn't have us buy textbooks, he had us buy books. So like there were a couple nonfiction ones and then there was fiction ones. And the purpose for the fictional books was to demonstrate like what the writers of the time are thinking and how history like bleeds into that. Like the great Gatsby, for example, sun also rises, which I used, you know, when I was in the classroom. So that is like where I was like, Oh my God, like he is like astounding. Like just as like a professional, like, wow, he is a really good teacher. 
And he was the guy who like took my writing to like the next level in terms of what he demanded. And like, just to like look deeper into the text and just like all that stuff, just like really a damn good teacher. Um, he's the guy who I, I've told the story before. Like I, I took so many classes with him because I love this style of teaching. I literally took summer school literally to go take one of his classes. Cause I was like, it's just so good. And I wrote a paper. I was just, uh, I was like exhausted. I was on like no sleep. I barely like read the book. So I just like crapped out a paper. It was like two and a half pages. And when he returned it, he literally crumpled it up in a ball in front of everyone and like threw it in my face. And he's just like, what is that? And I was like, yep, hundred percent. And then I wrote him the next paper I wrote and I got a hundred on it. And he's just like, yeah, that that's what it was. So like that kind of good teacher. So anyway, the long and short of it is after I had that teacher with that level of like expertise, like looking at history in a way I've never saw it before. I really wanted to be able to have those kinds of conversations at a high school level. So I wanted to bring those college like teachings of ex like excellent in writing. Like writing is the number one most important thing because that's going to make you do so much better in other subjects and in life when you're writing college papers, whatever, whatever, whatever. But then it's also finding unique ways to like deliver content, whether it is with like theatricality with like Mr. Egan or it's a little bit of like talking about how like fictional texts can relate to author's mindset of what we've already been talking about, or even going deeper into like text of using primary sources all the time and stuff like that. And you can't do that with elementary school. Like I can't show up to a second grader and I'm like, you need to read this primary source about the massacre of, we can't do that. So that's why I wanted to do high school. Um, so no, I wouldn't go back and do elementary college. I would teach i would 100 percent teach college you just need more unless you're an adjunct so yeah and like i would i had to get a doctorate and stuff and i had no interest in doing that i was like i'm i'm good i'm good steven thanks for the tour appreciate you hey pal to fiber you know we're all excited about green bay's offense watch them go three and out of the first drive in the first game and fans call for everyone to be fired as it is written Matthew at 20. Tom, what great lesson do you think Mr. Rogers taught the world? And what do you think we as a people could do better? Wow. Okay. Just, you know, nice, nice and light and easy questions today on a Friday night q and I also haven't taken a sip of the beer. Hold on. Let me get in my uh, ASMR voice. Also, I'm pretty sure Dash is trapped outside the door. So I'm going to check on that in a second. Cheers. He's either afraid to go up the stairs because of his leg or he's whining to get in. Buddy. Oh, you just wanted to come in? So you're whining like a big old baby? Ugh, you're such a baby. Okay. Okay. Mr. Rogers, uh, can you not stop? Come on, go lay down on your couch. Mr. Rogers, 100%. I also want to move this out of the way so I don't spill anything on it. This is great beer right now. Um, was, what is, it, like, his, uh, famous quote of, like, look for the helpers, Right? I think that that is a uh, a very positive way to look at the world. Um, I think because people are constantly flooded with negativity, whether that's just like with world events or just, you know, the internet as a whole, um, you know, job, daily life, etc. cetera. Um, it's really easy, I think, to get like super duper cynical. I think it's really, really easy to have a very negative view of people and the world. Um, because I think a lot of times like that's also what is thrown at you. So I think looking at like, look for the helpers is a really cool way to say, yeah, like all those things exist. Of course they do. Like your reality does exist. So what if you just look for the people who are also trying to help? Like what about like the everyday heroes? Look at the people who are, you know, being good in the face of, you know, something that isn't. Uh, and I think that, you know, highlighting that kind of stuff, um, it definitely helps because I think it kind of just gives more people a positive outlook on the world. I mean, I, I not to equate this to myself in any way, shape or form because it sounds super narcissistic, but like that's what 30 and 30 was. Like seeing the good, like I know what the world is, right? I taught high schoolers and even worse, I taught middle schoolers. I've seen true evil in this world, right? But like, I know what the world is and the internet is, but to kind of just 
go there and go to every city and everybody is so kind. Like that is the number one thing. And like Pittsburgh blew me away. Detroit, some of the kind, and I'm not talking about like, oh, all the fans, right? Who are like, of course, Tom, they're going to be nice to you. They're coming to, no, I'm not talking about that. They're, the fans are great too, of course. No, the best part was like just the everyday nor- Uber drivers, like just re- airport, like employees, like hotel desk clerks, like the co- restaurant owners, like the, just the nicest people. And they like found out what we were doing and they wanted to help, right? It's Uber drivers giving us like 10, 20 bucks when I'm supposed to be paying them, which I did paying them of like, Hey, taking a ride. And it's the checking in at the, literally that happens. I walk into the hotel. They ask why I'm here. I say why. And then they give me $20 for St. Jude. And that happens in the same city. I was in Pittsburgh and it was crazy. And it was the people donating stuff to like bring that belong to their grandparents and people, even if they weren't like fans of the team or like, anything like they still bid on stuff because they're like it's helping kids and like it was just such a, a positive thing and legitimately like it, it changed my life one million percent and it really helped kind of like solidify like yeah like there's some like really good stuff out there like there's some like amazing people really good people and like that's also like what we kind of build here you know it like listen it's a football channel i know who i am like it's a football channel i make weird content and I yell on a couch a lot. I promise that's not only fans, but like, it's just, it's just good stuff, you know? And whether you, again, people can not like my content. That's cool. People not like me. I get it. That's fine. This voice, I get it. It's cool. But no, like the people who are here and the people like, who are just like chilling. And the fact that like, I don't ask anybody for money, right? Like I'm greatly appreciative. I like truly, truly appreciative because I only make money with ad revenue and that, right? But, Anyone who's been here for the beginning of this, only time I've ever asked for money is for charity. There's a reason that is because I'm just like, oh, I'll just work harder. Like, it's fine. I'll get more ad revenue, whatever. And like people being here and supporting every charitable event, like the $5,000, like the charity for March, I set the goal of five grand. We hit it in a day and a half. Like it was done. So like next week, I'll push it again. I'll see if I can find the wide receiver gloves. I'll throw those in for the raffle too. But like, yeah, so we can take our love for sports and a football and like turn it into good stuff. Like, come on, man. That's 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 amazing. Right? Like me, like making football videos can help like people. Like, and it's not, and that's just like the charitable component because like so many of you said so many incredibly kind and very humbling things of like got me through COVID and there's always someone in here who's getting through a tough time. And like, I, I, I am beyond blissful that like that, the content can do that. Right. But I'm also making football videos. Right. And I'm glad that that could be somebody's like, Hey, I need a laugh or I just need like a distraction or a guy to sing. Don't fear the reaper in a tree. That's awesome. You know, but like the fact that it also can do like tangible good as like a perk pretty cool i think that's pretty damn cool darth turret tom live in milwaukee i know i know it's in pfizer i know i want to i i thought about it i thought about it justin fire rewatched some old raw i forgot the how good of a heel triple h was oh my god he was incredible yeah as a heel one million percent steven with fire tom found your channel this past season it's become a staple of my daily viewing love the content love your energy i appreciate you man hey appreciate you steven thank you thank you cheers cheers Mm-hmm. Jeremy, we've been tenor. Finally, got back from the uh, for the stream. Been caring for my twenty year old daughter's surgery for double labrum tear. Oh no! Lots of love and bring on the draft, Jeremy. I hope your daughter feels better. Yikes, that's a ouch. Yeah, I hope uh, I hope she feels better. And yes, bring on the draft. But give me like a couple weeks. Give me a couple weeks where you know there's no crazy news, and then we go crazy, and then we go crazy. That'll be good. Gods with a fiver. Best teacher I ever taught, uh, ever had taught history to demonstrate the T. Roosevelt point to point. Uh, Walkie did in the classroom by walking over desks and all. Yeah, like that's it. it it's phenomenal. phenomenal. And Wiser. Hi, Tom. Wondering uh, who do you got for the U.S. Championship triple threat match at Mania? Oh, wait, it's a triple threat now? I thought it was just uh, Orton and Paul. No? 
was a uh, go triple tag. Who'd they add to it? Uh, oh, it's KO. I forgot that KO got added to that. I'm sorry. I forgot. I forgot. Oh, that's dope. Um. Ooh, that's tough. That's a tough one. Like, do they just keep? I think you know what? I think Logan might retain. That or give it to KO. I don't think Randy needs it, but either give it to KO and maybe Sammy's gonna win IC and maybe they can celebrate that together, maybe. Maybe. Comment tenor. Entire answer sounds like uh, a great segue into doing a World War II lesson. Also, best grade I got on paper was about how Sakura from Naruto, the good representation of female archetypes in media. Hey, listen. I like I told every one of my students, I do not care how you demonstrate that you know and understand the material. Just do it. People made dresses, people did raps, people did poems. Just demonstrate to me that you know it. Could you do it on a four, like a standard test if you have to in the future? Because you need to learn those skills because unfortunately we have standardized tests. Cool, I'll teach you that too. But it's how can you demonstrate your understanding? Race winner tour, in their prime, you're taking Donald or what? Oh man. I might go Donald for the position. Just for the position. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the Bray Wyatt one. Yeah, that's going to be... That's going to be rough. That's uh, going to be rough. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought... That's what I originally thought they were going to do. I thought they were going to do LA Knight versus uh, Logan. But I thought... And that's why I thought like LA Knight would get like his big win. But I'm assuming he's going to. I did go to college. Yeah, I went to SUNY New Paltz for my undergrad in Concordia for my master's. Online, baby. Mm -hmm. Did that in a year. Literally... 365 days. Yep. Yep. I loved SUNY New Paltz. It was great. I was wearing uh, my hoodie this morning for GPS. So. That's it. Documentary has a panel on Saturday of Mania at the World. Think you could swing it? Ooh. Probably not. Probably not. But I am very excited for Mania. I am very, very excited. I can't wait. I can't wait. Lionheart on Max is uh, a much watch. Okay. All right. Yeah, because I saw the Iron Claw. Iron Claw was great. Well, I mean, great is it. It was a great movie. God, content-wise, was woof, woof. Did you answer mine? I don't know. What was yours? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Tater with a fire. Tom, any thoughts on doing a history lesson stream where you cover some of the main events in history? Yeah, I actually have done that before. Um, they're really long Q and A's. I didn't distinguish them, but yeah, I've done imperialism, World War One, Age of Anxiety. Is that it? Did I do nationalism? I don't even know if I did. I don't think I did nationalism. So yeah, no, th those do exist. Those do exist. Yeah, I'll do World War II at some point. Uh, I honestly would have to like go through um, my PowerPoint and make sure like there's stuff that I can show on YouTube because like like I show pictures <laughs> of stuff that <laughs> happened in World War II and it's it's rough. It is rough. I have notes from the other three. That yeah, there you go. There you go. There you go. Uh, let's see. Justin a fire. Best wrestler that is better as a heel. I definitely was way more attaining a heel rock, especially Nation Rock, Y2J, HBK, or in an edge. Edge a million times better as a heel. A million times better. Um, yeah, I like HBK as a face, though, but that's probably just the sentimental. Orton is, like, the best as, like, an anti-hero. Um, but yeah, no. HBK is, HBK is good, but I hated him as a bad guy because I was such a fan. I was, I was a mark. I was also like six. Hey, pal, to our most profound thing you've ever heard a student say. Profound. Um. I don't think there's anything that stands out from like, like a quote or anything that a student said that I was like, wow. But, um, I had some students, there's one student in particular, um, yeah, I was like, her name was Kristen, who I taught in AP Euro. I still think, like, there was some that came close. I'm pretty sure she was the, the yeah, I think she was the, the greatest writer I, I've ever had. Like, as a student, she, and, like, that was not for me. <laughs> because, like, she was, she was so good. She wrote... 
Like there was like no wasted space. Cause like, again, I teach writing. So when I, you actually see good writing, it's, it's awesome. And like a lot of my, my students learned how to write. And that's why like COVID was so difficult too. Cause that year was so bad. Cause like I couldn't teach how I normally taught. But anyway, uh, when it came to Kristen, like she was just so good. And I kind of just like taught her the way to like format it for like the DBQ format for it. But she was just so far ahead of people, like not just in writing ability, but like she was, she was brilliant. She was a really, really smart kid. Um, I hope she's doing well. And yeah, she was just the best writer. And she like would write lines or like, just like write, like make connections. And I was like, damn, like she would go like when we did, um, with AP Euro, the thing that I do all the time is after every unit. So it's like unit one, two, three, four. So like one is like Renaissance and that goes like for you know, a time. I think it's like is it 1850, 1848, something like that. I think that's the first unit and whatever. It's just section of time. Then number four is like Cold War to present day or it's World War One to present day. It's one or the other. Doesn't matter. So the point that I'm making is that she would like, I usually would go timeline. I'm sorry, all over the place now. So what I had them do after every single unit is I had them write out and rank the top 10 people, the top 10 most influential people of that unit. And so they did this in groups. I had them rank the top, like, and they had to explain why they were ranked there. The most influential events of the period that we learned, they had to do it on a timeline. So they had to plot it on a timeline. So it either could be digital or it could be physical. That was fine. And then they had to like basically create, um, like a, a test kind of like question or something like that around there. And so the reason I had them do that is because they all handed out physical copies of it and they were given digital if they did digital. And so at the end of the school year, they could go and they had everything. They had top 10 people who from different groups. So it changed and the justification for why they were influential is there. So it made for amazing studying. And on top of that, it helped make connections be like, Oh, this happened in unit one. This kind of connects to what happens in unit three. So back to that student, she would like go deeper than that and just be like, oh, even like pre AP Euro, this leads to that event, which then leads to that event. And I was like, yes. So like it was like college level stuff. So yeah, writing. Some of those kids could write. So I turn. Just remember that's to still have Peacock sub from the playoffs. Guess I'll watch my first foray into WWE WrestleMania next month. Anything I should know going in? No. Um, I mean, there's plenty of stuff you can know, but I will say like WWE does a great job of bringing you up to speed, especially for WrestleMania. Cause like that's their Super Bowl. There's going to be so many video packages that night. They're going to explain every single storyline to death and be like, here's what happened here, here. So by the time the bell rings, you'll know. TJ wrote a 12 page paper on the Hubble space telescope for technical writing. Whole paragraph on orbital mechanics. Uh, also got an AB on it. Damn. Jason Atura, do you see the penguin teaser? Looks good. Cautiously optimistic. Jason Atura, so glad I was able to catch my glorious Kings live. Ooh. Huh? Look, Atura, you ever heard of the curse of the tip of canoe? I have. Browns! Welcome to the posse. Appreciate you. Godzilla to tenor. My Raiders might let me down, but you know who will never let me down? Godzilla. Monarch TV show is great. I do need to watch that. I do. Godzilla minus one, a masterpiece, and Oscar winning. Also, I know. Long live the king. Long live the king. The other one, we'll see how it goes. I, I, it's probably just be like dumb fun, and that's cool. Gang with a fire. Good evening, Tom. Uh, just relaxing and watching March Madness with the dogs. The biggest upset of the day has been Kentucky and Auburn losing. That's what I hear. That's what I hear. The madness is living up to its name. Yankees fire team green or team black? Team black. Come on now. The Cowboys or the Packers surfs. It's accurate. It's accurate. Bills medieval society. Yes, correct. Round seven out of ten. How does it feel to make money drinking beer on a Friday night? Talk about literally anything on YouTube. Also, what are you drinking? Uh, Allagash White, of course, not a sponsor. I just like their beer. You know that sounded like a sponsorship. Um, yeah, no, it's it's pretty crazy. It's pretty crazy. But then again, like. I've been doing this now for nine years and I was doing Friday night Q and A's when I started them 2018, right? 17, 18, one of them. Um, and I've, I've done, I've done a lot of Fridays. So like I just started it the same and I was drinking beer and talking 
And if there was no questions, I was like, all right, I'm just going to keep talking. And then uh, people started asking questions. So it's just gotten a lot crazier now, but they're still drinking beer and answering questions six years later. Ugh. So there you go. Thursday Fire Fair quarterback in this year's draft, Tom. Oh, it's Caleb. Yeah, no, it, it's Caleb. I'm actually, yeah. Bo Nix, I'm, I'm actually curious about, but it's Caleb. Gods with a fire. How to write a paper on the subject of my choice in college. I did on my 1925 Tri-State Tornado. My professor said it read like a horror story. Hey, persuasive writing. I'll take it. Joe Defy 2. Suggest you have uh, Perna do historical figure power ranking for a GPS, but I'm afraid your head would explode. See, but that was a thing. That's the beauty about history. And that's what, so this is how I taught the skills without like sitting here and being like, this is what you do for writing. If I have you go, hey, you think Leonardo da Vinci is the most influential person in this time period, right? A hundred of you could go, that's no, that, that's not right. But if they're able to use evidence to justify it, then it's great. That's all I'm looking for. There is no, oh, this is right, this isn't. Can you justify it? Are there going to be other historical figures that have a ton more evidence? Absolutely. But the point is, if you're using evidence to back up your point and you can explain that, that's what you have to do in the essays. That's what you're doing in DBQs when you're like talking about the document and saying, this is what this does, right? And this proves this evidence and this is what this is demonstrating. And then for your thematic essay, you're doing the same exact thing there. Because if it's saying like, name three historical figures that blah, 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 boom, 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 boom. So that's how I taught AP. So... All right, uh, Luke Wittur, didn't you do historical figures, uh, March Madness bracket? Yes, so that was at the end of the year. After they had done all their rankings and all their packets, They, uh, I created uh, a 64 bracket, like a 64-person bracket of historical figures in AP Euro. So what we did is we literally like took a class and said, all right, like right, let's come up with the 64. And so we like spent all this time, like who has to be on it? Bam, 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 bam. And like, it, it would take a while. You, you, They got everybody. And then what wound up happening was we would get to like the end and like people were just like looking for people and were like, how about this person? And like, okay, yeah, yeah, sure. That works. We can put that person. And then there'd be like one or two spots left and then they would remember somebody. And then they're like, well, wait, there's only like one spot left. And so then they'd, someone else would remember something. And so- all of that is just reinforcing the idea of why that person's influential. So yeah, it worked every time because it was great review. You knew who all those people were. You could name drop them and at least give me a fact about them in an essay. That's it. That's it. Max with a fire. Man, I remember the good old AP Euro days. If I see another evaluate to the extent to which blank, I might explode. Oh, good old college board. Stephanie Otero, chaos kitten struck again this week. Jumping off the fridge. He opened the freezer up while I was at work. Lost everything that was in there. I got my revenge, though. Two days later, it was the big sn- <laughs> You're like, you may be laughing now, Gato. You may be laughing now. Insane Otero, see WWS title belts for MLB now. I did not see that. Look at them. Z, just finished three interviews, and now I'm doing three different wildlife this summer. Going to be a ooh, different wildlife this summer. Going to be a best summer. Busy summer. Keep grinding. Hell yeah. Let's go. Race with tour. Print a gift idea stock in the Packers. <laughs> it's, not, it's currently not on sale. Z, with tour. Wildlife jobs. Yeah. I No, I got you. Vitamins. Rock out, baby. Rock out. Rock out. Took you. Oh, you took A push in world. <laughs> a push. But yeah, no. AP world is just too much. It's just too much. So you just can't go in depth. So, you know, you know, just not, not ideal. Not ideal. Uh, what happens to you if Pernet the Vikings beat the Broncos in the Super Bowl? Oh, God. Uh, I, I, that would be, yeah. I'd, I'd laugh for a hot second, but then I would never forgive Perna ever again. I, I never would. Justin Fire, you thought about doing any more uh, Eastern holiday videos this year? Oh, um, maybe. I, honestly, it just kind of depends on what the teams do and kind of like what's going on around the time. But yeah, no. I mean, like the Bears video, like being a Bears fan, that was just out of nowhere. Like I didn't even write a script. I was just like, I kind of have an idea. And I sat down and I recorded it. 
And then I spent a long time editing it. And then there you go. There you go. Tracy, are there any middle schoolers that shouldn't be drop kicked? Very few and far between. Very few and far between. Not that I can think of off the top of my head. Not that I can think of. I don't think so. I don't think so. Thoughts on March Madness? It's a lot of madness. A lot of madness. Mm -hmm. AP Human uh, Geo and AP Euro. AP Euro is the goat forever. Uh, AP Human Geo, they actually didn't offer. So I actually don't know that course as well um, because it wasn't taught by any of my colleagues. So, nay, nay. Nay, nay. Ben, do you think Caleb Williams has a lot of pressure on him? Sure. You're also the number one overall pick. So, yeah, there's going to be a ton. Jason, to our top three MCU films. Ooh. Endgame, uh, Infinity War, Avengers 2012 for me. OG Guardians, Infinity War. It's either OG Avengers, Iron Man, or Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier is really good. I might go OG Avengers. Anton, love what you do, Tom. I was talking to a friend about Stalin. He said that young Stalin was kind of hot. I looked on Google and like, damn, still very bad. <laughs> the... <laughs> um... <laughs> <laughs> the I'm sorry the delivery of that Anton that was that was glorious <laughs> that was that was a multi-layered cake and it got better and better it was love what you do hey I appreciate you I was talking to a friend about Stalin okay that's a little weird but maybe you're like you're in history class he said that young Stalin was kind of hot and I'm like all right well now we've jumped the shark here okay that's a what and then you're like, I looked on Google and like, damn. So not only <laughs> is it agreeing, but then the cherry on top of still very bad. <laughs> perfection. Absolute perfection. <laughs> very bad. <laughs> very bad. Oh my God, that's funny. Just doing a fiver. NFC, AFC East, uh, NFT videos, my favorite of yours. It's a picture of pizza bagels. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was that was a good video. I had fun with that one. Ray with a fire. How different would the Roman Empire be if they didn't ingest so much lead? I think they'd still be wild, but maybe not as wild as they were. Oh uh, yeah, you're saying the lead slowed them down a little bit, just weighed them down. I don't know, man. Romans are pretty crazy. Uh, I don't know how much. Well, it depends also like when you're talking, but yeah, you know, also being like drunk all the time too. You know, just just mixing things. Mark Rutter, biggest pro and con about Jordan Love. Ooh. Uh, Jordan Love right now, it's just, I would say the turnovers, but the turnovers have already gotten significantly better. They He improved throughout the season. Like, he went through a lull, and it wasn't good, and he was throwing, like, game-sealing interceptions. Uh, and unfortunately, he did in the, so in the 49ers game. You know, but the hope is, like, he's going to learn and be better, and I think he will. But I would say, like, if that's a con, then that would be one. And then pro is that that was his first. That was his first season as a starter now could he decline sure but man like he was able to do that too with i'm sorry the 31st cheapest offense pretty good pretty pretty freaking good christian watson the guy for the future if he can stay healthy yeah definitely definitely boss man what's going on you mean geo is all taught to the test oh god that's the worst that's honestly the worst because like you could teach the content and then you just implement the test. So like I would literally just teach them and go, okay. And then I, my, all my quizzes were literally AP Euro questions. Like they were just from former like tests and it was just like, okay. So they understood like even a quiz, my quizzes were really hard. So AP Euro quizzes were incredibly difficult. And so like there was kids that would like fail them. And these were like a students. And I was like, they were only worth like 10 points or something. They like, they weren't worth a ton. But then the at the tests were worth more, and like when they can expound on stuff and stuff like that, then they you know 
a lot of students did very, very well on the test. And that was there because I wasn't trying to punish their average, but I was trying to get them used to the concept. And then by the end of it, they're crushing the quizzes and they're doing well on the test too. So that's it. You got day fiver. Tom, but you have two first round picks and need to move up. In addition to the first, Bears have the ninth and need more. Can you smell the collusion? Bro, if they traded the 21st and the 11th to move up only two spots, I'll take that collusion because then that's just dumb. <laughs> Just saying, but there probably is going to be a collusion. Justin with a uh, fiver. Uh, how how the big uh, the Bay of Pigs was a failure. What do you mean? Like how like why it was? You mean? I mean, <laughs> where do you begin? The amount of problems with the invasion was like horrific. Um, you could talk about leadership. You could talk about execution. You could talk about. Uh, not understanding the time, and yeah, it was, uh, it, yeah, that's a, there's a lot there. There is a lot. Timber, thanks for gifted membership, appreciate you. you. Let them drop their worst quiz? No, because by the end of it, I'd be like, oh, here's, like, another quiz that was, like, I knew they would crush, so basically, I, the amount of tests and stuff like that and projects and how much they were worth, they always shot their averages back up, so... But it also kept was the, it, sorry, I'm talking about quizzes. It kept that like pressure of like, oh, like I need to know my stuff because it was also for students that were like the smartest in the school, right? Like for like AP, they were the ones who like were supposed to have an interest in it, what have you. They're used to getting A's all the time because it was like pretty difficult to get into AP. And so it was my first year teaching it. And I was like, oh man, like these are going to be like, it, it is going to be intense. And yeah, no, like it, it's good. They need to be humbled. That's when I, I cursed at their parents. It was great. A bunch of AP parents. And I was like, hey, listen, like your kids like are going to fail a couple quizzes. Like don't, don't start crying to me. And I said that and I'm like, because your kids are going to do really well in the AP exam and they're going to be fine and they're going to get A's. Like, you know, if they work hard, like they'll, they'll, they'll do really well. And like legitimately, I think my first year I had two kids get a two out of the entire class. So yeah, it was, uh, it was pretty good. I think I had maybe, I had a bigger class the following year. I think I had maybe three. So yeah. And it was the highest test scores in 10 years in that school. So Tom Grossi, I love teaching AP Euro. All right, with tour. Oh man, Grossi talking about history, my fave. History is a mystery, baby. History is a mystery. So Mark, with tour, Tom, what was the hardest part of being a teacher? Um, Lucy's okay. Still a little bit of a limp. I'm waiting a little bit longer. I already told the vet he was still limping, so I might have to take him back for an x-ray. Uh, hardest part? Oh, man. Probably the Dementis. It's always the Dementis. Um, probably the the admin. Um, I really had, like, one good principal the entire time. Um, like, I, I, was a, I was a teacher. On real cheese with tour. Uh, we ever have a kahoot? They are great. I think I used a kahoot like twice. No, I used paper and pen. My kids do well. Anyway, um, so yeah, admin. I had one good principal. Um, admin that just like doesn't know what's going on within the school slash classroom. Parents were. I, I said I had like one and a half parent issue in like six years of teaching. And it was one parent who, like, I caught their kid literally cheating because she was, pa he, she gave work to another student. Like, it had her name on and everything. And she's like, well, I didn't know that wasn't allowed. I was like, literally just, like, he gave, try to submit their work twice. Uh, and just, like, a big problem. I was like, okay, talk to whoever you need to talk to. Do what you gotta do. Um, but yeah, it was, so parents were an issue because you just communicate with parents. That's easy. Um, because you're there to help their kid. And that's it. So, yeah, it was probably admin. It was definitely admin. Um, by the time, too, like, I had so many kids in classes. Like, I had, like, it was 30-plus in almost every single one of my classes. Like, it, it's a lot. Um, yeah, when I taught at Ursuline, like, there was, it was, like, high 20s. It was, like, high 20s, but, like, my AP was, like, 21, which was so nice. 21 is, 21, the difference between 21 and 30 high schoolers is pretty significant. Um so yeah, to even have like a smaller class like 21 is crazy. But like even just like saying that out loud, 
like to have to, I never had really an issue with this because my classroom management style was like very lax because it was like, Hey, like we'll have a great time. Just don't be dumb. Like, don't like, you know, do dumb things. And for 99% of the time it worked. Um, their students obviously like push the boundaries or whatever, whatever, but like the students usually just took care of it themselves. And I don't mean like, you know, hit them with a bar of soap. I meant just like they would literally do the self-disciplining and be like, Hey, like stop talking. He's talking. And I'm like, great. Cause that you, you create an environment of students who know that you are there to help them one, but two, you also need to get them interested in what you're telling them because they're, you know, ninth graders. So yeah, that, that never bothered me. I made farming interesting, like slash and burn farming interesting for a freshman. That was easy. It's always the adults. Monk with turn. You ever have a kid who uh, just never did any of the work, really did any homework and just some of my major assignments. Uh, once school was over, that was my time. So not doing anything school related. No, I get that. Um, yes, I've had some students do that 100%. Um, usually, I will say, this is a humble brag. I will say when there was a student who wasn't doing work and it was like known as like a a grade level thing because like their English teacher, their math teacher is like saying the exact same thing. I would say at least 80% of the time they were doing work for me still because again, you create an environment, blah, blah, blah. So I did have a student. Uh, I actually told this on stream. The last teaching uh, job I had, I had a student who was a senior and just wasn't doing work and he was combative. He, um, yeah, like I was told like, you know, might give you a hard time, whatever, whatever, whatever. And he was virtual for a while and then wound up coming in. But basically what wound up happening is it was like a month and a half, two months away from graduation max. And he just stopped doing work. And it was like, you gotta be kidding me. And he like, he didn't hand in anything for me for the quarter and he was doing it to every other teacher. And so he got pulled from the cafeteria when he was supposed to be in class. We got pulled from the cafeteria into a meeting where I was in school. Everybody else was like virtual in their classrooms or whatever. And then afterwards, like the meeting was done and he kind of just like was told like, you need to do your work, whatever, whatever, whatever. And so I remember walking out in the hallway and he was walking behind me and he's just like <laughs> language. He's like, you know, it, this is bullshit. And I was like, what is, I literally just turned out cause I was so fed up. That was during my lunch. And it was the only time I had off. Plus, I think I was probably trying to write an East Script Saga because that's what I did during my time off. And uh, he was like, this is bullshit that like, you know, they're on my case. Like, I'm going to do the work, whatever, whatever, whatever. And so at that point, like, I was like, all right, it's time for tough love. And I literally looked him dead in the face and I was like, you know what? This is bullshit. I was like, this is bullshit that I had to miss my lunch. This is bullshit that I could have been doing anything else with my time. But I had to sit in that meeting because you won't do your work. Something simple. The work is not difficult. You can do the work. We've seen you do the work. You've been doing the work. Now you're not. And that's bullshit. And he just looked at me and went, okay. And then he walked away, did his work. <laughs> so yeah, did his work. <laughs> That's how I taught. Like, again, I'm not like cursing at the kids, but yeah. That's how you teach. Janine, why are you talking about teaching? I'm so jealous. I would love to teach AP history. Love my sped kids. Would love to take the deep dive. It's just, it's very fulfilling. It's very, very, very fulfilling because it's just this awesome, like, hey, like, let's talk about history. And I freaking love history. So, hey, Mr. Terry, let's go. AP World History. Come on now. Let's go. AP Euro still better. AP Euro still better. Uh, Browns in with a fire. I know your audience. Always a math science kid. Hated English. Uh, teacher loved Monty Python. So I wrote my essay on Monty Python and the Holy Grail A+. plus. Done. 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 That's it. You, gotta, you have to find a way to connect. Otherwise, what are we doing here? I'm not going to stand there and be like, so slash and burn farming is when you chop down the trees and then you burn the stump and then the ashes are going to uh, fertilize the soil. And so then you could uh, plant some crops. No one cares. No one is going to care. And so we demonstrate it and we draw it. And I can't draw. They always laugh. And that's the thing. That's how you do it. Just out of fire, bring up of Civil War. I tend to forget how brutal that war was. Uh, oh, yeah. Leah has most deaths in a single war in U.S. history. Oh, uh, well, it's the most U.S. casualties in war because 
everybody was in the U.S. And lead with a uh, fire. Tom, two requests. Can you fix the order of the fan reaction 23-24? And Bengals fan reaction when? That'll be a roller coaster. Uh, probably within the next couple weeks for Bengals fan. Uh, and can I fix the order? All right, I'll take a look. I'll take a look. Paul Hunter, history is rarely appreciated until you're older. That's true. That's true. Yeah, Terry, I was wondering about that. Um, so yeah, I, I heard about that because I wasn't teaching AP when COVID hit. And I heard that the tests got dramatically like lowered. And I was like, interesting. Interesting. Appreciate you watching, Terry. Appreciate you, appreciate you. But yeah, that's it. That's it. But you know, you know. I know we got history teachers in the chat. Let's go. Dude. Yeah, AP Calc exam was trivially easily during 21. I heard. Yeah, I just heard. I mean, like the regions, like they stopped administering them. I heard it was, that was it. That was it. What were the students' reactions when they first found your YouTube channel? Uh, when I was at Ursuline, there wasn't uh, a ton. Like some students knew, but like a bunch of kids weren't into football. And so like, I was like, all right, that's cool. Um, and, but then like, so like when I was on Sunday night football, that they were at really, they were really happy for that. Like that was cool. Um, but then when I went to, when I went up North to Monticello, they didn't know. I also wasn't there very long. Uh, and then went to, yeah, then I went around here and the last day I left, that was the, um, the permanent sub position. I walked in to tell them like I had to accept another job and they were watching my videos, like the AP, the assistant principal. So that was really funny. Then um, in East Chester, there were kids that found out as the year went on. Cause like at that point I had, cause that was 2020. No, 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 no. So that was 2019. So I didn't even have a hundred thousand subs yet. No. So 2019 going into 2020, I didn't have a hundred thousand subs. So like I had like 50 or something like that. And kids were like, whoa, you're like kind of famous. And I was just like, nope, we're going to learn about history now. So yeah, I would talk to students like after class if like they were football fans, but that was that. And then when I went to Lakeland, literally I've told this, like I was teaching virtual and there was one kid who hung back in my second period class. And, uh, I was like, hey, like, there's a first day and they were the only ones there because like everyone had left. And I was like, hey, like, are you good? And he's like, are, are you Tom Grassi? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, I am a huge fan. So like there was a legit fan. So that was, uh, that was pretty funny. That was pretty funny. So, but yeah, other than that, like throughout the year, like more kids, like when they started coming in, like around May, June, um, like they knew, but we would just like talk about football every now and then, but it'd usually be like after class and stuff. If I didn't teach history, what I teach probably uh, English, probably English. So yeah, why not? So do I think uh, Josh Jacobs going to take on the role of sombrero? I don't think so. I think he's going to forge his own path, his own path. What do you think? Monk with twenty. I want to do the work. I didn't care. I had an IEP, so you know, no matter what I was graduating, if I had to do a school virtual during COVID. There would be no paying attention. It would be class on mute Netflix on TV. Yeah, I mean, a lot of students did that. A hundred percent. A lot of students did that. So, I mean, that was also a big issue because then they were like, oh no, now you have to take school seriously. And they're like, no. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, the IEP too, I mean, I didn't necessarily mean like graduation, but yeah, I mean, like you need to find it. Like that's, that's what I've always said that like that's not on the student. Like there's, there's some things that are on the student, right? And then the, them like doing work or like whatever, whatever, whatever. But it's your job to get their attention. Like it's your job to teach them. You are the teacher. You are, that's teacher, right? So that's your, like, that's literally what your job is. So like a kid's not paying attention. Well, then you need to do something to make them pay attention, right? Oh, they're not doing their work. Then you gotta do whatever you can to try and get them to do the work. And like, there are times where it's not gonna work out but I mean, like you have to exhaust like all of your options. So yeah, like, it, it, like that's your job as a teacher. Like it, it is exhausting your options for your students because the most important thing is your students succeeding. That's it. Back to the fire. My grandparents made sure I learned history outside of school. So glad they did that. Uh, these days I look at sports history or shipwrecks mostly. Yeah, I could 
it can create lifelong interests. It's dope. It's dope. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Completely lowered our academic expectations since COVID. Yeah. Like, but teachers knew that. And what I mean, that not in a negative way. I mean, like, we knew that was coming. Like, when we're looking at it and go like, oh, like, we're literally, like, we're just passing kids. Cool. I get it. Like, I get it because you're going through all of this. Like, but, yeah. It got nuts. It got crazy. Like, it got to a point where, like, there was a couple of seniors, like, who didn't do work. And I was just like, I can't pass. Like, I can't pass them. Like, they have zeros. Like, they literally haven't handed anything. And I would let them go. Like, I had, I was grading stuff, like, two days before graduation to make, like, to try and get them to pass. But because they just didn't do any work. But, like, it was nuts. Ten more to fire. How about teacher students who uh, care at the same time is so rare? Makes me appreciate the few times I've had that. Why I didn't like school, college. Yeah. And, again, like, that's just, that's the teacher's job. Got to create that interest. Linda, thanks for the membership. Appreciate you. But, yeah, that's what it is. It's just trying to... You have that interest. I like. I love history. It's my job to make them at least tolerate it. Andrea, what's Taryn? Teacher, Jason, dance teacher. Uh, best feeling is when the kids reveal that they were paying attention and absorb the material, even though it never seemed like it. Oh, yeah. 100%. There is a student, too... Um, because I always stole my AP. I, I'm just talking about AP a lot right now. But like my AP kids, I uh, I told them my, my class is harder than the AP exam. It is. Because by the time you take the AP exam, it should be easier. So there was a student who I taught as a freshman who was really smart. She was very, very smart. Um, And she went into AP. And when she went into AP, I was like, okay, I don't, I don't know how this one's going to go. Because she was very, very smart. But gener- the bump up from general, like, just G to AP is pretty significant. Because usually it goes general, then it's uh, honor, at least in my school it was. Then it was honors, and then it was AP. So what wound up happening is I was like, okay, this is, like, this is a big jump. Usually you go to honors next, but okay. And she struggled with my class. You know, I helped her and everything like that. She struggled with my class. Like, she was getting, like... 70s like she was getting like 99s in like my class and freshman for general but then she jumped both so she was getting like 70s and like you know she was like bumping up to 80s and stuff like that and she was like pulling b minuses and stuff she's like i've never gotten this low whatever 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 so when she went into the ap exam i was just like you're gonna be all right like you're gonna be good she got four so like she was like barely like passing my class like like 70s are like not great like it for ap like that's tough and literally got a four. And I was like, yep. There you go. There you go. Crushed the essay. Crushed it. And like, that's what you love. Like, there's also students, like I had that in my first AP class. There was a kid, like I was with that kid like every single day after school. She came in on all the Saturdays for the practice AP exams with like everybody else. Like she really tried. And like she bumped up and it, it was a struggle for her. And I did like everything. I spent lunch periods just like teaching how to write and stuff like that, 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 that. And uh, advanced placement, that's what AP is. It's basically a college-level course that you take in high school. And, uh, yeah, she was studying, and she was taking practice. She was getting better as a writer and stuff. Like, yeah, she she got a two. And, uh, like, that one one sucked, you know, because, I like, it was one of the first kids I looked. I was like, oh, please, just gotten a three. Like, just get, just pass. And she got a two. And I remember, like, reaching out to her mom, and I was like, you know, I'm, I'm so incredibly sorry, you know, like, too. And she was like, do not apologize. She's like, she learned so much. She's like, you did absolutely everything. Like, and that just view of, like, being a parent was great. And I think she either did really well in A-Push or she went down to honors where she crushed. So, it worked out. So, God's with a fighter. Middle school. I know, I know. I was suspended for bringing explosives to school. They're the little tiny snappers that pop when you throw them. Oh, the little, like, the poppers. Oh, that's, yeah, saying that explosive. That's, that's a lot. That's a lot. Yeah, AB score, yeah, one to five, three, you pass. Um, but then there's, like, also, um, like, four. Like, there's some schools that only take, like, fours or fives. There was used back in the day. It was, like, used to be just three. Oh, yeah. No, Terry, it kills you. It kills you, right? Because, like, when students, like, legit do the work, you know, and they and they try and stuff like that, and those are the kids you go above and beyond for, you know, but it's just, yeah, it's tough. It's tough when they still struggle, but... 
again, even if they take like some stuff from your class and are able to build on that, you know, that's it. That's it. So my phone policy. Well, I didn't really. So when I taught at a private school for, cause I taught at a private school for four years. Um, it, it, it wasn't like a terrible issue. Cause like, I just addressed it. I was like, just put your phone away. But I also would let students take pictures of the notes afterwards too. But I wouldn't let them do that if I didn't see them take notes, if that makes sense. Because there were also students who, like, there was the inclusion classes too. And so then there were students who would like, okay, they'd write, but sometimes like just takes a little bit longer to process it and what have you. And so I made sure they had all of the notes. Um, but yeah, phones weren't too bad. Um, and then in like later times, yeah, no, like it really wasn't an issue. It's probably worse today. I mean, cause I stopped teaching in 21. Um, and I, and I know it's just gotten worse, but I think like, it's just the way I taught. Like I'm so loud and I'm just so like, ah, when I teach that like, yeah, you're not on your phone. And plus like, if you are, you know, like I'll, throw something at you so you know rock it with a uh, tenor i'll give you three saints players of your choice in exchange for jordan love no thank you and those aren't players by the way I just that. appreciate it, though i like chris olave but not for jordan love hey nay mm -mm. and i oh i threw stuff oh absolutely i never hit a kid like with like a thing that i threw i've thrown pens like and i just make sure like hits a floor or hits a desk yeah like i've thrown like paper towel rolls yeah, 100%. 100%. I told you I used to like go, because I learned this from uh, my, it wasn't AP, but it was college level Italian teacher that I had in high school. And he used to like, during exams, he used to go into the back of the room, like while we were working on an exam and like climb on, like on a desk and drop a textbook. So you just heard, bam! And we would all turn around and he'd just be like, oh, sorry. And like, I never understood why he did that. Like, it was funny as hell. And I, like, we laughed. And then, we, like, we went back teaching. And some kids were, like, super pissed. But then I realized, like, what that was for. Because, like, there was a college exam I had to take. Like, and there was stuff like that to get credit. And so I actually utilized that with a couple of my AP classes. Because these kids get so stressed out. Like, so stressed out. Especially the AP kids. Because if they're taking, like, multiple honors classes, stuff like that. They get pushed like to an insane amount and high school by itself is an insane experience and the amount of work that you're having and bouncing between subjects. It's wild. So, and then, then that's just like gen ed and then imagine like, you know, it's sped up. So when it comes to like the AP students, it's crazy. So they have like, there's these little balls of stress. So I'm like, all right, well, like I'm going to break that. So I literally would go in the back and there was one time, like, there was poster boards from, like, a French, like, lesson that happened in the same classroom because I never had it in my own classroom. And I built a fort. And I was loud about it, too. Like, I would drag, like, the poster board. And I, like, sat in a fort and I just, like, built it. I, like, built it all around. And they're, like, turning around and they're laughing. And they're, like, oh, my God. Like, whatever, whatever. And they're doing it. Or, like, I would do, for example, like, I would, like, drop a textbook because... First of all, it gets students experience of like, hey, if something happens like during an AP exam, like you're going to be fine. And it's just like, oh my God, it's test, 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 test. Yeah, like I'm going to break the stress of that because I like reassure, they know what it is because anytime they take a quiz or a test, especially a test, we review, we have talked it through a kajillion times. They know the material, they're good. And to kind of break that tension and stress, like I had a student, like there were students in that first class that were singing the song they made up for AP Euro. They made, there's a great song by Childish Gambino, 3005. And they took the lyrics and they reworked them to be AP history for like unit one. And they were like singing it to themselves during the AP exam because it like gave them answers because they remembered it. And like, too, it like, it didn't stress them out. So that's it. That's it. God's with a tenor. Also middle school, got caught in a nudie mag and I legitimately tried to get out of detention by arguing it's natural to admire the female form. I'm shocked that didn't work. Jason with tour. Uh, the IEP, are they sped? I used to have both. Uh, it's, it's usually subjective, but usually IEP, 
they're potentially in like inclusion classes at the minimum. Boto, what's up, blog time? Sorry, I've been super dealing with issues. Boto, all good. Good to see you. Hope you're doing all right. Janine, would fire so many teachers, especially SPED, are burning out because of how much the system piles on us. 48 hours of work, 24 hours a day, we're drowning in paper. Yup. Yup. Like, it was bad when I was there. And it's just, yeah. It, like, especially during COVID, it was, uh, yeah. It, it was a lot. It, it's wild. And, like, there's always those talks of, like, these teachers who make, like, so much money and, like, you know, they're probably from the old system. The retirement system has gotten worse. Like, bro, it's it's scary. It legitimately is scary because, like, you start messing with the education system. Like, that has such, like, just ramifications that are not good. Adrian, it's not like a teacher I would have absolutely loved in high school. I appreciate that. I tried. I tried. Grace with a tour. Do you miss teaching? And Tom! Hi, good to see you. Um, I... Do you see it's it's so good, right, Superstar? Um, I thought I would. I really thought I would miss it more. And, like, talking about it now, like, that... It makes me miss, like, that aspect of teaching, right? You know? It's, uh... Because, like, there's nothing like... I mean, again... I say this all the time. There's people I know who got into teaching for the very wrong reasons. They wanted summers off, right? They also quit like a few years into the job because, and if you are a teacher in chat, you know, you don't teach unless you want to teach. And what I mean by that is like, you can get into it and like, you know, burn out within like two years. You can burn out in the first year because the amount of stuff that you have to do whatever the job is yeah like i never had summers off like but that was a seven day a week job always like every single time like for years i did for six years right and that's not even like touching veterans of the profession like and yeah i think maybe and plus i was also doing this (laughs) like that was too but yeah it was seven days a week i remember before i was streaming games i would sit on that reaction couch and I'd have football on because, of course, I'm going to watch football. And I'd have red zone on and I'd be making lesson plans. I vividly remember creating ninth grade lesson plans on like the Indus River Valley. So, yeah, it's insane. So you have to love it. And when you make teachers' lives more difficult in a profession that already is difficult. And listen, like there are some teachers who are not good. <laughs> there are plenty of teachers who are not good. But like you... That job and legitimately how crucial it is. And I'm not saying as like a former teacher, like, oh my God, we're the greatest thing since sliced bread. Nay, nay. But like, bro, we're babysitters for your kids. And we're like teaching them life skills. Because sometimes at home, they are not getting any of those things. So, yeah. Like you're teaching them how to be little humans, (laughs) which is... And again, that's why middle school just, no, they, they, no, but yeah, it's, it's a time. Hi. Hey Tom, you're at the Paul Farrington show, small podcast style. I recommend it if you get time or chance. Ooh. All right. What is it? Like what kind of style is it? I have not heard of them before. Jeremy at a fire. You're my Saints GM. Who's your first and second round picks for me? It's Brock Bowers and Xavier. Ooh. Uh, individuals. I couldn't tell you right now. Um, Tight end, yeah. You definitely need to address tight end. I don't know if you go Bowers, though. I don't know if you do. Um, I also probably would add at least one more. I, maybe one more receiver. Maybe, but I don't know if that's, like, number one. But, yeah, if that's in the O-line, maybe two. Yeah, I don't know individual people yet, though. I'm diving into it. As soon as it hits April, I'm diving in. Chris with a fire. Tom, thinking 30 and 30 may have been the best thing for your career. Great move, dude. You've been blowing up quick. Yeah, it's... <laughs> It's interesting. <laughs> it, the ramifications of it are crazy, but uh, we might get Justin Simmons. We might. Um, yeah, I think besides everything that we've already talked about, what 30 and 30 was and did, I think in terms of like career, I think it, I think it added maybe like a level of legitimacy maybe um to like the people outside the community but 
it hasn't been like, and that's why like, I also, I'm very transparent with that. Like this is a community thing that got me fan of the year. Cause like I didn't nominate myself. A lot of you did, <laughs> which is amazing. Like got to the Packers, then voted like people like Rose is in here. Kel is in here. Like people are in here being like, Oh yeah, I voted 52 times today. Like, that so that doesn't happen without the community and i think that that brought up 30 and 30 again but like that's why in every single interview about 30 and 30 it's like well no it's actually the community like the community did this because like yeah i went to 30 stadiums in 30 days to blah, and you know did whatever but legit like who donated the money like who you know supported this and like nominated and did all that stuff so yeah like i I can never get like an ego thing about and be like, oh, I'm on this, I'm on this point of my career right now. Cause that's just not the case. Like I just look at it like, damn, like we have an awesome community here. I'm super grateful for it. Like that legitimately like is because of you all. And yeah, like it, it's super damn cool. And so now 30 and 30 has just changed my perspective on, I mentioned this like on what I could do for content. Like it now, like I'm making a draft announcement on what I'm doing next in June right? That's similar to 30 and 30. So it, it's just like, it's been crazy. Cause like 30 and 30 didn't blow up. Like 30 and 30 didn't go viral. I got 7,000 subs for the month, like, which is pretty standard for an off season. So yeah, like it, it was, just, it's just been really cool. Cause I think just the community has grown. Obviously the numbers go up. But, like, that community feel, at least in my opinion, like, is still there. And I think a lot of it is because I'm doing two and a half hour, you know, Friday night Q&As. I'm still doing Friday. Like, I was telling that to somebody. Um, I think it might have been Nick, the, who I talked to for the Packers talk piece. And I was like, dude, like, I'm just me. Like, I, it, it's been the same. Like, I, I'm doing Friday night q and I win NFL fan of the year. I'm doing Friday night q and I do 30 and 30. I'm doing it Friday. Like, that's... That's just what this is because like, this is my job and this is what I love to do. And this is like the best part of the job. It's like literally just like building community, getting to know people and talking to people, you know, and then <laughs> that we've raised money for charity. Like it, it's pretty dope. And like, I get to make a living, which is awesome. Like, yeah, it's, it's pretty crazy. I'm, I'm just very proud of what we built, but it's also like that there's never a lack of, I don't want to say pressure. Cause that's a strong word, but like there is of like, yeah, no, like I need to work for this. Like this is the earn it every day. And like this past week, you know, like I've been kind of taking it easy. I've been like relaxing a little bit more. Like I went out two times, <gasps> craziness. I know I saw the sun bounce back, but now I'm at the point where like, yeah, like I need a vacation. It's been five years. I do need a vacation. I'm be very grateful for a vacation, but like, then I'm going to be doing Friday night Q&A. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just going to go back to the grind because that's what that is. And it's really cool to get like some acknowledgement from like the NFL. But again, a lot of that was because of the community and fan base. Like they were just like, no, like here's Tom Grassi guys. And I'm just like, it's really cool. I'm streaming other primetime game. Like why this is going on. Like I want, I, <laughs> I got the nominee for Packers fan of the year while I was walking Sinclair and I put her inside and I was like, that's really cool. And then I walked over to my neighbor's house because they're moving or they were moving at the time and they're a little bit older. And I helped them move down like furniture chair, like furniture, like lawn stuff, like off their deck into the curb because like they couldn't carry it themselves. Right. And then I went inside and I was like, that's really cool. I called a couple people. I was like, that's cool. And then I went back to work because like, that's just, it's just me. That's just, I'm doing cooler stuff, which is freaking awesome. It's super cool. But like, I'm also... Yeah, it's just like, okay, they're just I'm just going to keep working, though. Like, oh, man, I hit this point. Time to stop. Yeah, no. We ain't stopping. Rabbit of Fire, if you could spend the day with any Egyptian pharaoh from history, who would it be? Cleopatra. What? Come on now. Max, with the uh, two are biggest draft need for every NFC North team. Uh, I'd probably have secondary for the Lions. Uh, quarterback for the Vikings, quarterback for the Bears, and linebacker, middle linebacker to be specific for the Packers. Yeah. A Browns uh, with a tour. Uh, I get short visit. Favorite thing about Cleveland, maybe? Um, I went through the parade. That was really cool. Like, the festival that they had for the Pride. That was really cool. Um, the monster truck thing was really cool, but that's not, like, 
for Cleveland. So I'd say like the pride thing was a little bit more because it's like the people who live in Cleveland. Um, yeah, no, I, I, it was just like the people. There were some really, really kind people in Cleveland. Um, I wish I explored a little bit more, but like there were some times like Miami. I didn't see a single beach when I was in Miami. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like there's just stuff I couldn't see. So, but yeah, I, I enjoy the people though. Chris Latour, shout out to the Earth Tree. Do you have time? Oh, I will. Oh, I will. Ray Latour, shocker. Hey, come on now. Come on now. Come on now. Monster Jam. Monster Jam. Oh, no. Cleopatra kills me. All right, worth it. Come on now. Come on. Oh, hold on one second. Boop, 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 boop. My UPS thing was delivered. Oh, is that why the dogs were barking before? I see. I see. Do you need a fiver? Uh, been a teacher for 36 years and can't imagine doing anything else. It isn't what I am, but who I am. I love the feeling when a kid succeeds. It's fine. That's why you become a teacher. Corey, moving tomorrow to start my dream job. Hell yeah. Finishing up packing, listening to the best creator. Now I'll be able to do organized good <laughs> pills best at NFL. Hell yeah. Congratulations on the dream job, baby. Let's go. We earned that shit. Come on now. That's awesome. That's freaking dope. Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. Oh, that'd be, that's pretty dope. That's pretty damn dope. I uh, just have a policy where you couldn't watch a movie unless it was educational. Uh, the private school? Yeah, I just had my kids, uh, like, had their parents, like, sign something. It was off to the races. That was easy. Um, I taught, the one time that was, like, potentially an issue was, like, the COVID year. And I was just, like, I, like, went through, like, all these hoops to, like, show them a movie. And then I was like, I'm just not going to do this again. And then I just showed them the movie. And the admin was like, what are you doing? I'm like, showing this movie. And they're like, okay. So <laughs> I, I just got away with it. I just got away with it. So that's it. How do I feel about people doing spinoffs for the GCU for other sports? You do what you got to do. You do what you got to do. It's out in the wild now. That's it. I mean, it's just like the art that's created and stuff like that. Like, you know, try, try to like either like give me credit or, you know, do something original. But yeah. It's all good. It's all good. Favorite Daniel Craig movie? Oh, Skyfall is really good, but no, it's Casino Royale. It's Casino Royale. I love Skyfall. Skyfall is a great Bond movie. Quantum of Solace is horrible. But yeah, no, Casino Royale is like very, very good. I never did any class field trips. Nope, not when I was a teacher. Nope. I went on trips like where my kids were at, but like as a chaperone, but like it was not even out in the field like they like went for like some random events or some crap like that so it was like down the block but lawful good no fun all the chaotic good all the chaotic the grassy cinematic universe hey pal yes that is the term that has been deemed for coach and the sagas mm -hmm. casino royale is a very good you're saying best goldfinger's great a spy who loved me is really good too Boy, with a fire. Tom, currently getting drinks. Uh, ooh, it was dad watching the Badgers. Feels good. Uh, hope you're doing well, big man. Thoughts on Packers in general? Man. Second cheapest offense in the league, and they're only going to get better. Very happy with the Green Bay Packers right now. Very happy. Ready to tour? You should watch uh, Jujitsu, Kaysan. Ooh, Kaysan, weird anime. All right, I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Hey, man with golden gun is good. Joe 252, GCU spinoff for other sports. Good idea. Mm-hmm. Jeremy! Thanks for the membership. Appreciate you, appreciate you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Zach with a fire. Tom, on my way back from PAX East, you gotta attend one of these. I've heard they're pretty cool. I've never been. I have never been. But I've heard very, very good things. Very, very good things. Do, 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 do. I gotta respond to that in a minute. All right. Tell what they tour. Daniel Craig and Layer Cake basically audition for Bond. Yeah. Right? Right? Tom Boy, gotta teach a question. Uh, what was your preferred method of teaching? Lecture, presentation, or something else? Uh, whenever I lectured, I always had notes. Uh, I had teachers who did straight lecture with no notes behind them. Um, but, no, I always had notes behind me, whether it was handwritten or whether it was uh, PowerPoint. My PowerPoints were usually, like, I did PowerPoints a lot, but I had them do, uh, they were, like, general. Like, they were, like, the basic facts, and then you just expand on them, obviously. Um, and that's, like, also what they write down. But then they also can be like, I can remember this phrase, which is then going to trigger all this other knowledge that I have. So that was like the normal way of teaching. But obviously, like, I'm also very animated in the way I teach and blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then I did a lot of like group work, kind of like some game elements that were definitely like worked into stuff 
whether it was like the March Madness stuff with NAP. Um, I had the freshmen I had a lot more fun with in terms of like the games that I played. Cause like, they're still like kids too. I, I, it, well, I worked with the sophomores too, but like I had them do like the bubonic play game. So what they would do is like someone would be sick. I would give them each an index card and they had to vote out who they thought was sick. And it just like turns into anarchy because it's 30 freshman girls who are just screaming at each other. And if they got three people wrong, like if they voted out three people who weren't infected, like they all would quote unquote be infected and they would lose. Oh my God. They turned on each other. And the best part about it is I did it at the end of the year. So like throughout the entire year, they like gain, like they, they become friends. There's like a bond as a class, blah, blah, blah. And then they tear each other apart. And it is the greatest thing to watch. It's literally Lord of the flies, like just sitting there and watching them just be monsters and they're just like, it's you, you're a liar, your face is turning red. And so then all like, it's group mentality, they're like, yes, they're like, vote her out. So then they would vote her out and she wasn't infected. And so then the non-infected person would be like, I told you I was, and it was just art. And so then I would give them primary sources or before then I would give them primary sources that talked about like that stress and the paranoia that happened in these towns and families turning on each other. And then they literally demonstrated it and they understood. Brandon, welcome to the posse. Chris with a fire. Okay, when someone gives a membership, what does that mean? I actually have no idea. Uh, so uh, when you gift a membership, it basically you pay and it gives someone a membership for a month. So you have access to like the monthly Q and A's. That's the only thing I have behind a quote unquote paywall. Um, and then the... Uh, uh, like all the emotes and stuff like that. So that's what that is. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. That's good stuff. Yeah, that's good stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh, Terry, it's the greatest thing ever. It's the greatest thing. Love, total drama. Love Island, to be honest. No, it's, uh, it's nuts. But yeah, that was super fun. Um, yeah, but like I would also do... Like I, I talked about this lesson that I did with the freshmen. I, I had so much fun just like because that was like you added more like activities and games and stuff like that. Like I, I did the, we read uh, a famous passage from the Prince for Machiavelli and it's, uh, you know, the, the, the classic one, is it better to be loved or feared? And I, I've talked about this on stream before. I had them do it for different categories in their life because all of them basically said feared when it comes to being a ruler, right? Like almost unanimously, maybe like one or 2%. And they always brought up the president and they were like, you want to you kind of be afraid of the president, you know, like to have like an authority figure because they're the entire, uh, you know, the entire country and blah, blah, blah. Right. So then I go, okay, leader. So like leader, king, president, what have you. Vast majority, they vote fear. Then I go, teacher. And they go, Fear, def def definitely fear because, you know, otherwise I won't do the work. You kind of have to be afraid of your teacher. And then someone ultimately goes, well, I'm not afraid of Mr. Grassi, but I love doing his work. I'm like, yeah, I do Grassi's work too, but like I'm more afraid of the other per And so then that starts splitting the group a little bit more. And it usually is like a 70, 30, 65, 35 split still of like fear. And then I go, okay, we made it through that. What about your parents? And that's when it's pandemonium. Because that's when it's like a true 50-50 split, usually. And they're just like, no, like, I want to love my parents. You think I want to be afraid of them? And they're like, well, a strict parent could just make somebody rebel. And then they get into the psychology of it. And, like, again, that just goes and proves the point, And it's how they understand the material. Yeah, on a fire, Bama just dropped a hundred on Charleston's head. Ouch. Finn! Welcome to the posse. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So, yeah. I think Jags will make the playoffs. Oh, uh, yeah, I think they have a good shot. I mean, it's going to be more of a competitive division, though. I think it's, it's not going to be easy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, fear and love. Fear and love. That's it. That's it. Favorite album name? Siren Song of the Counterculture is pretty good. Rose, what fire? I'm behind. So if you're giving shout outs for uh, fan of the year voting, you should thank Sam, not me. I use Twitter, but Sam actually voted my way more than I went. 
Shout out to Sam. Sam coming in clutch, crushing it as always. Yeah, y'all crazy, crazy. And now we got this broken trophy, baby. And no one can take this away from us. Well, I mean, technically someone could. They could break into my home and take it. And then they'll realize it's broken. And then they'll probably be like, do you have any Gorilla Glue? And I'll be like, why are you in my house? And they're like, to steal your trophy because you said they can't take it from us and I wanted to prove a point. And I said, that's valid. And no, I don't have any Gorilla Glue. So yeah, that's how I imagine that would go. That is, that is my broken. No, it's not heavy. No, it's literally, it's 3D printed. So 2023 ultimate NFL fan of the year. Tom Crossley. Well, I ain't dropping it. I, what's going to happen? Is it going to break? He said, now I'm going to hold it with two hands. Now I'm going to hold it with two hands. Oh, you know what was really cool, too? Because there was, um, like, obviously I didn't like get to make a speech or anything, uh, which is cool. It's all good. <laughs> NFL honors. Um, but so I didn't realize that for the Packers fan of the year for their their Hall of Fame thing. Like, so the, there's, there's two separate things because the Packers do their own thing. Packers have, like, their fan Hall of Fame. And, uh... I didn't realize, like, they had a full press conference. Like, that was cool, because, like, Mark Murphy was, like, up there talking, and Wes was talking to me about that. Um, But, like, they let them go up and, like, speak and, like, give a speech, and their family goes out. I thought that was really, really cool. So, shout out, Packers. Shout out, Packers. That's dope. That is, uh, that's dope as hell. So, large percentage that failed your classes? No, 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 no. General, it was really difficult to fail my class. Like, you literally, like, did not, didn't do work then. Um, Yeah, no. Uh, that was no. And then AP kids, like I made sure that like, if they really understood the stuff, they were fine. Yeah. They got, they literally earned the grade, whatever they got. So, oh yeah, we rocking. We are rocking. Am I going to do a collab with Jerry? Who's Jerry? 49ers fan, Jerry? I think the Vikings make the playoffs next season. I think that their rookie QB is going into a really good situation. I think they'll be competitive, but I think they're still going to be a year away from the playoffs. I think it depends obviously how good their quarterback is. Obviously. So, you know, how far do you think the Falcons go in the playoffs? I think they're a wild card right now. Yeah, I think they, they can win a game. And again, I think they're going to, I'm really curious to see, because again, new head coach too. So I'm curious to see how they play this year. I think they're going to be better. They'll, they definitely have a shot to win the division. They'll be challenging with the Bucks. So, yeah. Super Bowl predictions based on free agency. It's the Chiefs until proven otherwise. <laughs> I hope the Bengals, Bills, Ravens, I hope they're competitive. Even though I'd love to see the Ravens. That'd be pretty dope. Um, NFC, I think the Cowboys will still be competitive. Um, Eagles, I'm very curious to see with different coordinators. Uh, 49ers will still be good, even though they lost a couple people. They'll still be good. Seahawks will be competitive. Rams will be interesting. Yeah, I'm curious about the Rams. Uh, But I think the Packers and Lions have a good shot, too. So I'm just going to be biased and say the Packers, obviously. Kevin! 32 months, let's go, babe. Let's go, let's go. Mm-hmm. Eagles are interesting. Uh, we're about to find out if it was really a coordinator issue, which, by the way, we know is a coordinator issue, but we're about to see if it's other issues as well. That's going to be the one. That's a good one. Yeah, Steelers are going to have an interesting season. They are going to have a very, very interesting season. So, we'll see. I hope we have a top 10 defense. God, I hope so. It depends on how Halfley does, but... Investment's got to pay off at some point, right? Right? I think. Please. Please. So. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Terry, you're a Vikings fan too? All right, Terry. Hold on. Let's see. Let's see what we got here. Let's see what we got here. So you just do like... Okay, what do we got? Oh my God, the key and peel stuff. Oh my God, yes. Oh, it's dope, dude. Hell yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Terry, like, shoot me an email just so I have it. It won't be until, like, post-draft or something. It might be, like, deep in the offseason. But, yeah, shoot me something. We'll, uh, we'll link up. Rock. Boto, I actually started working out more. Yeah, I started working out. I'm starting to get a little bit more back in shape. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. I also will tell you how much I hate the Vikings. 100%. And anything you say about football and the Minnesota Vikings and Packers will be taken out of context, and I will edit it. All right? I'm just letting you know. Close to a turn. Uh, you're going to watch the Bray documentary? I will. Yes. Yes. Max with fire. Would you be uh, for or against expansion teams if men getting the divisions got split up against? Against. Right now, they're just trying to... Uh, it, it. They're trying to expand globally. 
the places that they play so that the influence of the NFL grows. Um, Goodell was like, I don't, it, he doesn't think that there's going to be any expansion teams while he is commissioner. So we'll see. We'll see. But yeah, no, because in 2025, they're playing in Spain and stuff. Obviously, Brazil uh, in 2024, which seems like it's going to be Browns Eagles, it seems. So yeah. yeah. Appreciate you, Bato. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So yeah, we're rocking. Nick, what's going on? Do I think Russell Wilson will be good? Um, If, let me put it this way. If they're running the same type of offense that Russell Wilson was in last year with the Broncos, no. If they change it up a little bit and they're not throwing behind the line of scrimmage like every other play, they could. I think definitely the run game is going to help a lot. I think Warren and Harris, like, if they can establish the run, and Russell Wilson can be used sparingly, I think they're on a much better path to success. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Andrew, why expand to the international market as compared to encouraging these countries to develop their own leagues? Well, I mean, like, they have, like, programs, like, right? Like, there's there was a few players, like, from Africa and stuff, which was really cool. Um, but do you want the other answer? Because the other answer is they want to spread the NFL because then money. <laughs> That's that's the other answer. So, yeah, I'm, I'm actually surprised. I thought the Vikings would maybe take a shot on Russell Wilson, which would have been great. I would have laughed on that one. He probably would have done all right. So, yeah. Uh, Tom, do cookie streams every weekend. What vegan food can I make that will stack up against non-vegan food? Uh, It depends on the ingredients that you buy, but you can make really good eggplant parm. Eggplant parm. I would do sausage and peppers, and I... I will swear by it as someone who ate meat for 22 years like bro my sausage and peppers it you wouldn't know it's vegan um i will say you use beyond like i use the beyond hot sausage like the hot italian sausage that's uh that's very very good very very good so yeah i would say uh one of those dishes you do because if you buy like really good vegan cheese like if you buy miyoko's Vial Life is good. It'll melt well, but people will know it's like not cheese. Miyoko's is probably, it's the most expensive vegan cheese, but it's also the closest. You can make your own out of cashew or tofu, but yeah, Miyoko's if you just want to like purchase that. So, mm-hmm. Michael, I'm excited. Yeah, I'll be, uh, I'll be checking out SmackDown. Uh, I, uh, I DVR'd it, so it's Drew Winter. Yeah, I made a, I made Poe Boys. Oh my God. I finally got to the air fryer that Mama Grassi bought me like two years ago. It's been sitting in my kitchen. I finally like hooked it up and used it. Oh, it's great. I made some hash browns in it. Oh, I made them so crispy. But then, so what I did, um, yeah, you just threw a piece of cauliflower on there. You marinated them before and uh, coated them and then uh, threw that on there. Yeah, I, didn't, I couldn't get French bread. I couldn't get French bread. Um, but yeah, it was also gluten-free too. So, rocking and rolling, rocking and rolling. Yeah, Boto, I agree with that. The bacon, yeah, vegan bacon is rough to replicate. There there have been a few that have been very good that I've had, but it is very difficult because it's either, like, too chewy or it's just, like, it doesn't have the taste or what have you. Yeah, I usually don't even go with I Like, I haven't had vegan bacon in a long time unless I was, like, at a restaurant or something. So, nutritional yeast, yep, that's good for, like, uh, like flaky cheese. Yep, that's not bad. The everyday cheese I buy... It's vile life. Yeah, the po' boy was really good. It was really, really good. It came out really, really nice. Marinade was good. Yeah, it was really, really good. So, yeah, but that's the thing. You know, it's just you try to find the best kind of stuff, but, like, Miyoko is super expensive, so I don't buy that very often. Vial life melts really well, so I use that probably more often. And then, yeah, there's just so much. There's so much. You, like, anything you want, you can just make vegan now. It's so easy. It's so easy. And that's it. Like, that's what I tell people too. like, obviously during 30 and 30, like there were, there were many days where I just had a protein bar because I just didn't have time to eat. But, um, like I like good food. Like I wouldn't eat food that wasn't good. You know what I mean? Like I'd make it taste good. Even when I was like broke as hell, like I'll make something taste good. At least like if it's beans and pasta, like, you know, I'll season it enough. So it'll be okay. So THC. Think Kirk Cousins win a Super Bowl with the Falcons in the next four years? Could he? Sure. Will he? It depends on the support that's around him. 
Team of the Day uh, Tour, how do you impart a meet and GPS come about? GPS, we've wanted to do a show with one another for years, and then we just finally were able to do it when I quit teaching. Carmi was a little older. Perna, I met because I posted on the Broncos subreddit in 2015 that I needed a Broncos fan to interview for PatCast, and they all directed me to Brandon Perna. We talked for like an hour and a half, immediately hit it off, and did a whole bunch of interviews afterwards, and remained in contact. And that was it. That was it. All around, I mean, there you got a safety. They need ex- additional safety depth. Um, definitely need middle linebacker. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Uh, they need depth there, too. So, yeah, probably some OL depth, too. Pack with a fire. Ball boxing. Tyson or Jake? Oh, I, go Pack Go. Go Pack Go, indeed. Uh, yeah, like, I'm going to be very honest. I don't care about any of the boxing with the Pauls. I don't. <sighs> yeah. I I hope Mike Tyson wins, but like I I also don't watch. But it's just not my sport. Like I don't I don't watch boxing. But yeah, no, I just don't care. And there's not enough evidence that it's not completely and totally BS. <laughs> now that you're trying my first Allagash White, tasty. I'll take that. I'll take that. God. All right, real quick, we're gonna do uno mas. Yeah, we're about to hit three hours. Uno mas. Game Beauty Tour, when does Grassy History class resume? I love that. Yeah, I just, that was me. I didn't have, uh, I didn't have my materials tonight just because I went to go look for it and I didn't upload it. So I just had to find my uh, hard drive and I would be, uh, I'll be rocking and rolling. So I would assume it's probably not going to be in April, to be honest with you. Uh, if I do the draft, it's probably going to be in like May if we would do it again. So yeah. All right. I'm going to pee for the D real quick. That's going to rouse. We're going to do that. I'll be right back. I'm going to pee. Make sure everything's good. Right back. What am I? All my body cracked. They like, shut up. And I'm rolling. <laughs> All right, we're here. We're here. Uh oh, what? What happened? What happened? Here we go. Uh oh, taking over the chat. Answer these questions. Cool. Ask, ask Terry questions. Ask Terry questions. Do that. Yep. Yep. 1991. What? What? Huh? 1990. Who's talking about? What? Birch wins. Everyone else is banned. All right. I don't know what's happening. Well, something happened. I don't know what happened, but... All right. There we go. We're rousing. Moosey is laying. Rocking. Rocking. Uh, while you're gone, I said they had to answer the question. They get a zero for the day. <laughs> oh, all right. Teaching tough. I like it. Gods of Fire, still say Pern is most consistently correct and unbiased YouTuber on Earth when it comes to the Chiefs. We're witnessing pure football genius. <laughs> genius can take many forms. <laughs> it can take many, 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 many forms. So, yep. Yep, yep, yep. All right, let's put this here. Let's put this here. Bam. Bam. Boom. So listen, they're just rocking. They're rocking. Tom, why are different NFL franchise media teams so different in quality? For example, my commanders have very mediocre media coverage where the Vegas Raiders content is amazing. Ooh, that's a great question. Um, 
there's actually a multitude of answers there. Uh, it's very subjective. So if you have a team that... Okay, so... Oh, that's another layer. There's multiple layers. So let's talk about the Packers. Because, of course. The Packers, their social media team is great. They are not allowed to post a lot of content. Like memes, things like that. They've gotten a, lot, a little bit more flexible this past season for reasons. But... um. There, it's a very traditional view. Like Mark Murphy literally told me and was like, hey, like we're not going to do some of this other stuff that the league has to do. Why aren't they? One, it's also like the fan base that they're looking at, right? Tends to trends a little bit older. Two, um, they don't have to worry about selling tickets. They have a wait list of like 90 years, right? They don't have to wait. Or they don't have to do memes. And three, it also depends like who's on the board and who's in charge, right? To make those decisions. And if you're investing in a social media manager. So that also could depend even on the owner, right? So like the owner might say like, hey, we want, like we want, for example, um, like to maintain this kind of communication with the fans. So it could be very like, here's an event, here's a player, here's a play, blah, 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 blah. So, like, the Chargers, they have now have this reputation of doing that, and you've seen other teams in the league adopt that. I think usually that's what happens, too, if they hire someone, like, who's younger for that position, that someone actually understands, like, what social media is and, like, how to utilize it. So, yeah, I think it's resources into the team, but it's also dependent on who owns the team and, like, the leadership of the team to determine what kind of messaging goes out to the fans, if that makes sense. Flying with Terry. Grassi, as much as I love you, it's part of that motivates me. To be that wrong that often, but still have that confidence, I could do anything. Also love you, Mr. Terry. There you go. That's right, Flying Grayson. You know what? You and the Graysons, you can, you can perform in that circus. Nothing bad will happen whatsoever. I believe. I believe. But, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, Mr. Terry, we're going to have to do some stuff. All right, we should do, you know what we could do? We could do the history of the Vikings in the Super Bowl. I think that would be a really informative and just knowledgeable topic. Um, I think that would be really, really good. Um, you know, I could I could just sit and just listen, you know, and just listen and uh, just interject every now and then, you know, just provide some expertise, you know, of just... <laughs> You know, just I just just a, a well, like you know, you're the guest, right? If I'm bringing you on, then you're the guest, so you should be able to pick a topic that you're passionate about. And what's more passionate than the Vikings? You know, and the biggest game there is. That's a that's what I'm saying. Okay. So, I think that that's what we could do. We just do that. Brett <laughs> Brett Favre screwed us. Did he screw you more or Mississippi? Allegedly, uh, like which one? You know, because it could go either way. <laughs> Fine, with that terror, you motivate me to try. Perna tells me that using no safety net would be cool. I think that sums you two up. <laughs> that... That is... Honestly, that might be the greatest explanation of Perna and uh, like our dynamic with one another. Tom, you make me want to try. Perna, you make me want to have no safety precautions whatsoever. Yep, yep. Jeremy the Fire, history. Uh, the only U.S. president to be nominated for Medal of Honor to not win it for unpopular politics. Ooh, we're going a little U.S. history. Uh, I, I only taught for a year. Is it Teddy? Maybe. Maybe. Gods with a fire. Give the Chiefs credit for one thing. They brought me together with Broncos and Raiders fans, the enemy of my enemy. That's it. Jasper with a fire where you cover the UFL. Pern is doing that. I'm probably not going to cover it. Uh, that I'm just, yeah, I just don't have the bandwidth to do it. But yeah, no. Uh, Pern will be doing that, though. Pern will do it. Maybe at some point. Maybe at some point. Teddy did get a Medal of Honor? He did, right? Oh, and so oh, so he got it nominated. Oh, I don't know, nominated then. 
Andrew Jackson makes friend. It makes sense. That does make sense. That does. Oh, Jeremy says I was right. Teddy Roosevelt. Yeah. Woodrow Wilson. No, Woodrow Wilson gets nothing. Woodrow Wilson gets nothing. Barely gets credit for alliteration. Barely. Skull Nation. It's not great. It's not great. It's not. Not great. My Canadian ass is sitting this one out. Hey, listen. Canadians are often underrepresented in the world wars. Gastro Tour. Also, I really like your beard, Tom. It's not intentional. I've also grown my hair out. That also wasn't intentional. But we're here. We'll get haircuts in. Gods of the Fire. Mom always compared you and Perna to the odd couple. You're Felix and he's Oscar. Or is it uh, Grumpy Old Men? That works too. That's it. Yeah, not great, Terry. Not great. Not ideal. Not ideal. Yeah, play Birth of a Nation at the White House. Not, not great. Bye, Terry. Whoa, Wilson is the Vikings of presidents. Whoa. Whoa. Hold on. I don't, I, you know, I, I don't like that. All right. Like, I, I want to be serious for a second. Woodrow Wilson is not the Vikings of presidents. Okay. That is super offensive because Woodrow Wilson was married twice, meaning that he at least had two rings. And the Minnesota Vikings have zero. That's right. Oh, you thought I was going to be on the Viking side? Never. Ringless. Ringless purple incarnations of Satan. That's right. Absolutely nothing. There is no quartering for you here. Nay, nay. You will never find refuge. But anyway... <laughs> Just to fire, I'll take James Buchanan as the worst president in U.S. history. Oh, he's got competition. He's got a lot of competition. A lot of competition. <laughs> oh, God, that was great. I had to look up how many wives he had. Just had to make sure. Jason Atura, how about NBA history? Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan. The Last Dance is also Michael Jordan propaganda as well. Great, amazing player. Also Michael Jordan propaganda. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Andrew Jackson. Andrew Johnson was bad, but, like, Andrew Johnson wasn't, like, an awful god, like, human being. There's others that were pretty awful. <laughs> Go to a 20. Clip Bay Sports of the NCAA tournament. Grassi takes it all. Yes. Perno with a uh, Cinderella Elite 8 run. Scooter with a respectable Sweet 16 appearance. And five takes down Tree in four versus 13 game in the first round. Oh, that's fair. That's fair. That is fair. Fly on fire. Would Reagan uh, be the Cowboys? Only real fans living in the glory days won't stop talking about it. That sounded like the Bears. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> it's 80s too. It just works. It works. It works. Uh, the Bears believe in trickle-down economics because they keep on drafting first. I mean, that's it. I'm, I'm done after that. See, it's not just the Vikings. It's not just the Vikings. I can hate almost equally. Almost. Almost, almost, almost. Yeah, Andrew Johnson right after Lincoln. Yeah, like he wasn't good, but he wasn't like a god-awful person. <laughs> We've had some presidents that are not good people. They're just like objectively. Chris with fire is a too cool uh, wrestling team. Uh, who is who between you and Perna? Perna, I, I will tell you the actual answer. Perna will say that he is Eddie Kingston. And I'll say that's not right. And he'll say, no, I'm Eddie Kingston. Because Eddie Kingston likes Brandon Perna. So that's it. Would I ever go back to stand-up? Yes. Not, like, full-time, but, like, yes. Mm hmm Spicy, can we get a lion's joke now? Uh, I mean, you guys don't need a joke. You have that banner, right? They got, you got that. Who needs a joke when you have a banner? It's so nice. What do you got? You got two in there now? It's, it's really good. It's, 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 it's good. It's really good that you have those banners. It's so nice. You know, banners are pretty... They look, they look nice. They, they really spruce the, the place up. You know, it's not, it's not a Super Bowl banner, obviously, <laughs> obviously, but you know, like one step at a time, just baby steps one by one by one. And then, and then we get there. We get there. Get one of the 990s. March Madness, one of the best sports spectacle. It is pretty damn good. It is, it's up there. It's pretty damn good. Coach Fire, James Buchanan is the Vikings, the president. No rings. No rings. Flying with tour. Lincoln is the Packers. He believes in no owners. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Well, I mean, if we're going to talk about Lincoln and slavery. That's a, 
That's a different topic. That's a different one. Back to the uh, tour, best worst president. That won't get problematic at all. Never, never. Um, I mean, I'm in. I'm in FDR mark. Like I am. I I like FDR. I like he he wasn't. He wasn't like godly. Teddy's up there too. He's up there, but yeah, I like both of them. Uh, worst. That's a that's a tough list. <laughs> Honestly, there are. Uh, yeah, that's what I mean, Terry. Like just kind of like what the country needed. It was uh, it was FDR. Uh, <laughs> there's, there's a couple. There are a couple that are not good. Um, also, how are we judging worst? Because if we're judging worst based off like just decent being human being, Andrew Jackson's pretty bad. Uh, Woodrow Wilson, pretty bad. Uh, there's, <laughs> there's been a few recent ones, not so good. Gods of Fire, been a while. It's been a while. I kind of miss it. I hate my team. I feel better now. Hell yeah. Boost of Fire, officially on unpaid vacation. I'm going back to the motherland to renew my powers and finally see my grandma for the first time in 20 years. Yes! You see grandma. Let's go, Bufuso. Going to fire. PFF season, what's up? What's up? Cheers. What's going on? How we doing? How we doing? Super Wood of Fire. Teddy Bear fact. Wilson was elected after Teddy Roosevelt was recruited to run as a third party against Taft and divide the Republican votes. Wilson signed in the Federal Reserve and our fire current. Yes, our flag current. Yes. Federal Reserve. Federal Reserve. Outside of the 14 points. Which, by the way. Oh, wait. Whoa, 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 whoa. Terry, Terry, hold on one second. Now, do I like Eisenhower the most? Like, like, that's fair. Listen. Where are you on the 14 points? Because if you keep H push, right? So, I taught AP Euro. So, the perception of Woodrow Wilson coming into the European theater going, I will save you, Europe. And just be AP world, excuse me. And just having him being laughed out and not taken seriously. Yeah. The the respect for Woodrow Wilson as an all time low. All time low. It's just right there. Right down there. That's there. Yeah. Oh, condescending. He's just like, I will save them. I will do it. I will do it. Janine with a fiver. Many of my students are studying World War One. I. I am spending way too much time thinking about Woodrow Wilson. Makes long days much longer. Yeah, World War One is, oh man, it's one of my favorite topics to teach about. Woodrow Wilson is one of the worst parts about it. Flying with fire, take it back. Cowboys are JFK. The Cowboys promised to go all in and JFK promised to serve a full term both lied. They both get eliminated in the first round. I'm sorry. Okay, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's the only, that's the only joke. Oh, it's been a good run. <laughs> Eli was dropped by to say hi. Hope Dave was lovely. How we doing? How we doing? <laughs> I love Friday Q&As. It's, too so it's not too soon at this point. At this point. Terry, post-World War I, my favorite topic. Favorite topic. Hmm. Oh, man. Oh, man. Yep. Yep. Yeah, literally, World War One, Like, World War One, post-World War One is my favorite history topic. Oh, that's great. That's yeah. <laughs> Tom, spoilers. It's my bad. My bad. My bad. Oh, my God. <laughs> Can we switch to what Perna was holding in the cold open? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Age of anxiety. Mm-hmm. Rhett's, it was a professional decision. It was, like, I told that to people. And I was explaining that to Nick, actually, when I was talking for the Packers talk thing. I was saying, like, there are times, like, when you do stand-up, and if you do stand-up for, like, a long enough time. Um, Lacker, thank you to tour. Saying recently found the channel. Enjoy. Go Jets. Hey, hope you have a better year than last year. I hope so. Um, I was talking, like, you do stand-up long enough, and there are times where you're doing well, and then just because you're just like, you know what? I'm going to tell, like, a really dark joke. Like, I'm going to tell a joke that is not going to get the audience on my side. Like, they, I just spent the past 15 minutes making them love me. I am now going to just be like, hey, I, I want you to hate me, 
because I want the challenge of bringing you back, right? So <laughs> there was, there was, uh, that basically was that decision of making the JFK joke. I was like, you know what? Yeah, we're going to do it. <laughs> we're going to do it. We're just going to make it happen. So, Cause like you could tell dark humor jokes. Like I was telling that with Nick too. Like you do it. You just don't punch down. Like it's super easy. Like just don't be like, don't be a douche nozzle. Like it's super easy. So that's it. Mm-hmm. Ah, uh, Revolutionary War. Ah, uh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Theater history. There you go. Listen, history is a mystery. Also, I forgot that I did that um, until I went back because I was watching something. Um, my appearance on Pat McAfee, the fact that I literally did history is a mystery <laughs> on the Pat McAfee show. Like, literally, <laughs> I did a mystery is a mystery. History is a mystery. If that doesn't, if that doesn't show that none of this is going to change me, I don't know what does. Fly me to her. Packers, JFK, 49ers, a grassy no. <laughs> uh, Super Defire. Air War won. Wilson tried to establish the League of Nations, but failed. Uh, when they finally see establish the United Nations. It's true. Uh, yeah, Congress was like, no, we're not doing this. This is dumb. Why would you say that? Derek, want to see you still going, Tom? Did I miss an AP history lesson slideshow? No. We've just been talking about history. It's been great. Yeah, the earpiece wouldn't stay in. Yeah, either. No, legit, it kept falling out of my ear. And I was like, I am trying not to fix this, but it keeps going to me. Yeah, that was fun. That was fun. Shot of fire. Uh, nah, William Henry Harrison is Dallas, performs well for his term and dies one month into, <laughs> due to poor decisions. That's, that's, that's fair. That is fair. Yeah. Yeah, no, that was uh, that was really really funny. That was really really funny. So, yeah, that was good. Uh, are you a political science or economics teacher? Yes. So, no, it's all good. Don't I apologize. Yeah. So I taught uh civics uh a bunch of years, and I taught that in public and private school, and then I taught psychology, and I also taught economics in public school, because if you are a social studies teacher, you have to be able to teach all the humanities. So that's uh, Global Nine, AP Euro, AP A Push, U.S. History, Psychology, uh, Civics, and Economics. So, yeah, you need to do all that. But I don't think he uh, turns, Cody. No, I don't think so. I don't think he turns. I think uh, Seth is gonna lose, though. Me too. I do think so. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. George Washington at QB. That'd be solid. That'd be solid. Be a good coach too. I feel like Washington would be better at coach. You'd be good at QB, but better coach. Lincoln, a deep threat wide receiver one. He's tall and lanky, yeah. He's like a possession guy. He's like a Julio Jones in the end zone. That's what I'd say. That's what I'd say there. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Uh, Zachary, yeah, no, I don't know. I, I don't have a bracket, so I don't know. I don't know. I don't have it. We got the slow-mo clip of you, the combine, and the stream intro. I always say it's freaking fracking time. Oh, yeah, we'll work on it. Five taps on the O-line. Yeah, because the new intro is coming. The new stream countdown is coming for draft night. So I got to talk to Johnny about that. I got to remember that. But, yeah, I do that. I do that. Wrestler. Yeah, Lincoln was a good wrestler. He might be, maybe maybe you want him as a receiving tight end who can also block. Derek, thanks for gifting five memberships. Appreciate you. Thank you, thank you, and thank you. But yeah, maybe you want that. Maybe you want him just uh, like a tall tight end. He blocks too, you know? Civics, yeah. Civics can be a lot of fun. I just like, I like the flexibility to teach civics. We get current events every Friday and, uh, yeah, we talk about some good stuff. Because, like, honestly, what I do with civics is I, I just force students to back up their own opinions. <laughs> because, like, that's when I, I have so much fun with civics, especially because I taught in 2020. So I taught during the election year and, uh, never had an issue. And there were students of vastly different beliefs there. And uh, anything, like, you found out real quick, because the majority of them do, because you're a student, right? You're, like, 18 years old. A lot of it is, like, parroting, or at least it used to be, you know, like, kind of, like, what your parents were, or like, whatever. Like, you could tell who watched, you know, CNN or Fox News, because they just parroted the same things. And it was always fun, because, like, you just deconstruct both of those and just go, like, no, like, what's your actual opinion? Like, how do you feel about this? And if you feel this way about it, just back it up. 
like just give me enough evidence to back it up. So similar idea to like history and what I was doing with AP Euro, but you know, like it forces students to critically think and form their own opinions. Like I'm not, I don't care how you vote. Like I'm not swaying you one way or another, you know, I don't, whatever, like just be able to back it up. That's it. That's it. That's it. I'm not going to lie. I know I said uno mas. I'm feeling one more. I feel I haven't drank beer in a while, so I'm feeling one more. I am. Just to attempt, meet by the greatest wrestling managers, Paul Bearer. Yes. Yes. When time the Undertaker to his falso voice to imagine Kane with his normal voice. So cool. Just the mystery of Kane was cool. I agree. I agree. <clears throat> I don't know if I could do that. <clears throat> I used to do a decent Paul Bearer voice. I don't know if I have it there. Oh, yes! Pretty solid. Not bad. Not bad. Young with a uh, fire. Which president are the Bills? Four straight years, they could have been great, but never got it done. <laughs> I also love the description of that. That's a great question. That's a great question. Bill, what's your... Oh, we rocking. We rocking. Mmm... I don't think Priest will cash in a mania. I don't think so. I don't know. That's a good one for presidents. I need to study more U.S. history, to be honest. Our bills are Jimmy Carter. Oh, that's like, too, that works too good. Oh, and you like Jimmy Carter too. Oh. Super, did you read our constitution in your classes? Uh, When I got into U.S. history, it was past the constitution unit. You spend an entire unit on the constitution. But for civics, we go through the Constitution and use it uh, use it to, like, real-life examples. AJ Fire, which team uh, would you like to take ownership of or become head coach besides the Packers? The Vikings. I will run them into the ground. They will know ruin and pain. Renew with a tour. A fire, excuse me. Lincoln has a tight end. Has the block only. His vision, looking back, is incredibly lacking. Well done. Well done. I also love how we have made several president jokes this evening. I appreciate that. GG's. GG's. Uno mas! We'll do uno mas. Get an Alagash Y up in here. We're rocking, baby. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. Not the best president. Seems like a good dude, though. Jimmy Carter seems like a good dude. Mr. JT Retour, will you ever join us in your server's VC for stuff? I have done that. Literally, as soon as I won NFL Fan of the Year, I joined the server. Yeah. I mean, I'm on the Discord server. It's just, again, while I'm working, I'm just working. Whiskey! What's up, Tom? Been a hot minute. How do you feel about Devondre Campbell publicly had issues with the front office? He was not happy with how it ended. Yeah, I'm not terribly surprised. <laughs> like, it's just, it's kind of a theme. Um, But he spoke about coaching a lot, too. I saw his thing on Twitter, too. I think he had some good points, but, yeah, I mean... I just, unfortunately, like, I really liked Devondre Campbell. It's just, whatever the situation was, it wasn't good enough for this past season. So, I get it. I hope he does well. 49ers. Fly with fire. Uh, why would you own the Vikings to make them know only pain? They do that to themselves anyway. I know, but every now and then, they, like, draft a good player like Justin Jefferson. That'd be gone. That'd be gone. Justin Aterrick. Definitely loved uh, Barra's work as a heel from 97 to 98. The story of his mysterious cane told by Barra 97 was so intriguing. His debut lived up to his description. Oh, yeah. About the Undertaker and the fire and all that stuff. It was great. FPS with fire. Favorite era of music history. Choose the 70s. The worst era of hip-hop, but still need to create the genre as we know it. Ooh. Yeah, I'd agree with that. I think 70s, like, a lot for, like, the, the rock stuff that I like and, like, metal stuff. Yeah. Like, 70s and 80s is good. Corbin, would they fire Teddy Roosevelt as the middle linebacker? I'll take it. Janine, would fire. I think teaching civics in 2020 was interesting. Imagine how much fun I had trying to teach during election of 2000. I learned to hate chads. <laughs> Hanging chads. Yes. So, fun fact. Fun fact. Here. You want story time? I can give you story time. I can give you story time. All right, hold on. We're going to do this. We're gonna have this is the Uno Mas. This is the Uno Mas. <laughs> like a glove. Alright. Let me go. P for the D really quick. Because I broke the seal. P for the D. 
Be right back. And it'll be story time with Tom Grassley. Be right back. Da -da -da -da. Let me tell you some stories. Let me tell you some stories. Nate was born and raised in Nebraska. As a Husker fan, to be honest, it's hard. Nebraska athletics is giving me nothing but pain and heartbreak year in and year out. It's depressing. Any advice? That's when you pick another team to also root for. So at least you can find a little happiness. Eric Ventura, Miller Fillmore for Bears GM. Hmm. Why not? Why not? All right. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. <clears throat> Skull Nation said, I chose the wrong team. I wish I was a Packers fan. Have you heard of the glory of Cheesehead Nation? Let me tell you about the Green Bay Packers. First of all, we're always accepting. Second of all, if you are a Vikings fan, you just have to come to an understanding that you are a traitor, right? You have committed original sin, but you can be baptized in the fondue of Lambo cheese. So the doors are always open. I'm just saying. Just saying. Exactly, Foster. First step to recovery is admitting your mistake. Yes. Acceptance. 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 <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm convert. The cheese head's a lie. Anyway. <laughs> Baptize in the fondue. That's it. Okay. So this is what Janine was talking about the 2000 election. Let me paint a picture for you. So in 2012, I graduate college, right? It's May 2012, New Paltz. It's a nice day. Graduation runs a little long. A couple weeks prior, I got that call from UCB, the Upright Citizens Brigade. It was like, hey, do you want a spot in UCB? And I was like, hold on. Nope. I'm going to go be a teacher. Idiot. So I uh, can't get a job. Can't get a substitute teaching job to save my life. There is about a three-month wait list because there is such an oversaturation of teachers in the market in 2012, and I cannot get a job. So it doesn't happen until uh, November, which turns into December 5th, but I get the job because I can't get... Oh, Titans got Sneed? Oh, did they really? Oh, not the Colts? Oh, damn. Oh, damn. Oh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. So, Chiefs are expected to receive a 2025 third-round pick in addition to a seventh-round pick slot, uh, flop. Wow. Bro, the Colts are going to be so pissed. The Colts are going to be so mad. 
They're going to be so, so mad. Yeah, wow, they didn't get a lot either. Wow. Damn. That's nuts. Yeah, the Colts are all the Colts are gonna be pissed. Uh all right. Anyway, uh story time. So, uh December take that job. So that's in twenty twelve. Um fast forward, I worked there for about three years uh until August of twenty fifteen. Uh, it's my first teaching job. So technically, this is before August. So this is around June of uh, 2015. So yeah. Uh, but winds up at no three-peat. Yeah, I'll probably wind up doing a... Uh, yeah, I'll probably do a reaction video. Yeah, I'll, I'll probably log off within the next like 10 minutes and I'll go do a reaction video. Um, anyway, so what winds up happening is I'm interviewing for my first ever teacher job. Uh, I go in, it's just a verbal interview first. I meet with the chair, Scott, who actually shows up to these, uh, at some point, uh, he, he shows up, shout Scott, and we have a conversation. He winds up emailing me, I think like that day or the next day, basically saying, Hey, we want to, uh, we want to bring you in for a demo. If you're not in teaching a demo is like you prepare a lesson based off the criteria that the employer gives you and you teach a lesson to students who are not yours, obviously, but like a random class. <clears throat> or sometimes you teach teachers, which is worse. But basically, uh, he said the 2000 elections. And actually, 2000 elections, excuse me. So I said, okay, uh, I didn't teach civics at that point. I was more a history guy of like, just like world history or something like that. And so I said, okay, so... What I did is I was like, all right, this is my first ever demo. So I created a little PowerPoint um, and I went in there and it was for, I think it was a sophomore class. It was a sophomore or a junior class. I think it was sophomore. And I walked in, it was like one of the last periods of the day. And I, I go, okay, I'm going to give you like a little piece of paper. And here's what I want you to vote on. I want you to vote on if legislation was going to pass for the school would you rather have monday off or friday off it doesn't matter why it doesn't matter your rationale behind it just which one if you had to pick if you were just gonna have a four-day school week would you rather have monday off or friday off so i let them discuss it amongst themselves like have a little bit of a conversation right so Monday, Friday, Monday, Friday. And a lot of people usually say Monday because Monday is associated with very negative things, right? So some people are saying Friday, blah, blah, blah. So I wind up collecting all of their votes and I make it super dramatic. And I go, okay, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the vote. And like, I pull out like the first one and I was like, we have a Monday. We have a Friday. We have a Monday. And then like I pull out another one. It's a Monday. I think I pull out another one. It's a Monday. And then I go, okay. And I pull out a huge handful and I chuck it behind my back and I go, oh no, we lost some votes or some votes didn't count. I guess Monday wins. And the people who voted Friday were like, are you kidding me? This is, and they're like super pissed. And I was just like, Welcome to the 2000 election. <laughs> and I literally jump into the lesson that way. So at that time, uh, that, <laughs> that I did that, like it literally was a performance. I had so much fun with it. And uh, <laughs> I taught them about like hanging chads because what that was is like there was a piece of like, because you used to like punch holes like in the voter ballots. And like some of them were like hanging and whatever, whatever, whatever. So I taught the whole lesson and then I had them like vote again, whatever, whatever. And so I wound up getting the job because uh, I started that September. Um, but there was another teacher who was hired along with me that was like he had taught before and was like, oh, like, you know, he he's like a teacher with experience and stuff. And I was like, oh, I don't have any experience. So I don't know if I'm going to be good. A few years later, uh, that chair would wind up leaving and we were at a bar. And it was his last day there. And we wound up having a conversation. And uh, 
I like I never really got feedback for my demo, except obviously I got hired, so it went well enough. Gods with a tour. Third party nominee, Tuesday. It's a front runner. It's an underdog, really. But anyway, um him and I had a conversation and I was like, hey, like, yeah, like I always thought like this teacher was significantly better than me because like they came from a prestigious school before that and blah blah blah. And they were like, no. They go, he taught a very like traditional like hey this is the 2000 election blah 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 blah. he goes you came in there and literally like threw a bunch of paper on the ground and hooked those kids and we we're like that was one of the best like demo lessons i've ever seen and i was like wait really this is like years later i was like really and he's like yeah and i was like oh thank you so like that was a very nice like professional like pat on the back and then the only other demo lesson I had to do was we both got hired. So after that, I took a job in Monticello. I didn't even, I did one interview for that. It wasn't even a demo. They hired me. Should have been the first red flag. Then perm sub job, didn't need to demo for that. But the Eastchester job that I taught, um, I had to demo for that. And it was civics. It was civics. So it was government again, but it was any topic that I wanted. So it like I thought of like, okay, I could use the 2000 election, but like, what are they talking about now? That kind of doesn't make any sense. And this was high schoolers and this was seniors too. So I said, okay. Um, so I had nothing. Like, I mean, nothing, nothing. So I had to wake up because I had to be there at seven. So I had to leave my house by 6 a.m. I woke up at four and I literally threw together a lesson. And I was like, all right. Because at this point, this is like my fifth year of teaching. I was like, all right, I'm just going to like throw together a lesson. We'll see. If I get this job, cool. If I don't, whatever. And I basically got there early. I was like, can I use your printer? And like went to the library, printed out a bunch of stuff. And I basically did a lesson and threw together a lesson about social media usage, about like Twitter, Facebook, because Facebook was like decently popular at the time. So like Twitter, Facebook, and I want to say it was like Snapchat or something about like where they get their news from. And then I showed them like examples of like the bias, like within the news and blah, 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 blah. So I did it. And like the assistant principal was there. I know, sneak to the Titans. We talked about this already. It's okay. Um, And then I, I taught that. And like, I wound up like sitting, I was like, I don't know if that went well. Like the students seemed to really like it, but like, I literally just threw it together like two, a few hours before I, I taught it. And, uh, I literally go to sit down with the the a principal afterwards. And he's like, do you mind uh, just like kind of like going into the library for a little bit? And I was like, okay, this is after my lesson. And I was like, oh no, did I like say something wrong? And I'm sitting in the library like with my laptop case and kind of just being like, I got to get to work. Like ugh, I got to do a bunch of stuff today and blah, blah. And uh, he calls me in and he goes, yeah, so I'm not going to let you leave this building without a job offer because, like, that was one of the best demo lessons I've seen. And I was like, wait, really? And he's like, yeah. And I was like, oh, yeah, okay. Bro, I threw that shit together, like, three hours before. It was, not, like, it was not my best lesson. It was not. But that learning experience was really good to have because that was a school um, like it has a pretty good reputation. It, it's a good school and it's kind of just like as a person who came from private school to go into public, there was a lot of like nerves of like, oh man, can I hang with public school teachers? And then that was like, oh, I can. And then, yeah. So that was cool. That was nice. Yeah. I just liked it. I liked it a lot. I really love teaching. Teaching's, uh, She's a great part of my life. I don't regret it for a single second. I have a master's degree, which I don't really use anymore now, but you know, yeah, no, I've always, uh, I've always enjoyed it. I heard Sneed to the Titans. That's what I've heard. So I've heard, oh, that means I got to do some more work. That means I got to do work. All right. Is that, I don't know. Is that big enough? Um, I think it is. And it is, because I could do Colts, I could do Titans, I can do Chiefs, probably throw Ravens in there. 
here you're getting the, the behind the scenes you're getting the behind the scenes of my thought process this is all we improv ravens definitely can do that okay yeah yeah amateur would you consider getting back into teaching uh after this job no i i, I love this job so much i love this job so much i love teaching too but yeah no after this i love this Jay Satori, is it good for the Chiefs to trade? Uh, it doesn't look like they got a lot in return. That would be uh, I problematic. So, yeah, that'd be an issue. All right, I could do it. I could definitely do that. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see on social media kind of what the... Uh, I'd imagine, I would imagine the Chiefs fans are pissed because they probably did not get a... Uh, they didn't get a lot. All right, let's see. Let's take a look. Oh yeah, nope, they're not happy. See, I know, I know my teams. I know my team's fan bases. It's just because I spend every waking moment thinking about football. But, yep. Yeah, Colts are going to be super pissed, I would imagine. Because they were, they were rumored to have it for so long. They were rumored for so long to have it. Yep. Yep. That's going to be rough. That's going to be rough. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Everyone's pissed at Ballard. Yep. All right. God's a tour. I thought it was an excellent trade. As you would. As you would. As it was written. As it was written. So. All right, folks. I'm going to go record a reaction video. Oh, crap. I didn't think I was going to do that at 11 o'clock because we did a three and a half hour uh, Q&A. We still had over 500 people in here. I appreciate y'all. Uh, Yeah. Probably not going to be new content tomorrow uh, or Sunday. I'm going to kind of take the weekend, and then I'm going to do a whole bunch of reaction stuff next week. Uh, I'll drop a reaction video within the next, like, 20 minutes or so. Just got to record that. But, yeah, Terry, shoot me an email. It's TomGrossyComedy at Gmail. If I don't respond immediately, don't worry. I will I will get back to you. We'll do some stuff. Uh, but, folks, it's got to go. Your expectations for the Fallout show. First trailer, wasn't impressed. Second trailer, very optimistic. Rosa Tour, inside look at your process is awesome. It's just my weird brain just improving it right now. Yeah. It'll probably be about like a minute 20 video. Maybe like a minute 40. Maybe. But folks, thank you so much for watching. I'm Tom Grassi. And as always, go Pat, go. Let's go, mate. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go.